Is it, is it live yet? Because it's, it's time. How would you, you, know? you say? You said you press the button. Oh, it's a little green, yellow, yellow light in the corner, so it must be live. Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the eModels live stream. It is me, Chris, and Fox has given me charge tonight, although I haven't got any buttons, but I've still got, you know, yeah. Um, I'm here, as always, with Fox, who you probably Hello. can't see because he's Chris. blocked it Hello. on me, but, you know. But, uh, yes, we are here, and Teddy's still not with us again, obviously. Still recovering, but uh, I haven't seen him in chat yet, but he might turn up soon. Uh, we're, we're, we're assured that he is recovering slowly, but getting there, but not there yet. So he'll, he'll be back, but not today. Yes, he's, he's, uh, he said that he's um, he stopped dropping things now, um, but his, his attention span is still a bit a bit gimped. So he's just he's just slowly recovering, slowly but slowly. So we're all we're all saying, get better, Ted. Get better, Ted. Did he did he say? Yeah, the only problem is my attention span is. Oh look, what's that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I had to, to intone because he only got halfway through the sentence. <laughs> uh, so it's Monday night. We're here. Uh, we're ready to talk about whatever you want to talk about, and probably some modelling as well. Um, we've know, got, got some stickers yet. and some mugs and some kits to give away, or a kit to give away at least. And... I, forgot, I forgot to get stickers and things ready, didn't I? Let me yeah. do that while you're talking to people. We have some stickers. Look, stickerage is going on still. Um, I think we, we still have some of the, the large E stickers. Then, when I say E stickers, that's a sticker of an E, not, not e. an electronic sticker. That's the well, one. An, an electronic sticker would be quite useful. We could just email it to people. Print out your own. Different email sticker, which they probably can't see if you're not talking. So blah 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 blah. blah, 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 blah. No, because they don't do the second window, do they? There's only two of us. No, uh, it's only two of us. So I don't think you get little windows. Yeah, we've got the little window and the big window. But don't forget, the big sticker is not the white square. That's a piece of paper. The sticker is just the E. Indeed, as you may be able to see on on the corner of my booth there. Maybe it depends on how I've got the camera angle. But, uh, yes, that's that. Uh, so we're we're here for your pleasure. Um. Don't forget, send questions and answers, preferably as well, to ted at emodels, emodels.co.uk. Uh, and any shout outs and all the regular stuff that we ask you to send us, keep sending it because otherwise it's very boring because there's only two of us. Yeah. So, now, you know. so, some news, exciting news. <gasps> exciting. There is the emodels, the ted at emodels.co.uk email address is now on here. I've got access to it. Oh. So, although there's nothing in there yet, so it's just. There's nothing in there yet. Did you not get the test that I sent you? Did, did that come through? Oh, we've got. Oh, well, no. Hang on, we've got two sub. We've got two shout outs just coming. Oh, shout outs to go. We'll, we'll do that a bit later on. So keep keep them coming. Yes. Keep them coming. You are our third presenter this this week, as every other week really. When there's only two of us, because we yeah. we do need you. Um, we'll both be keeping an eye on chat. But if you do need a question in chat, don't forget put it all in bold letters. <laughs> in capitals one, as well. Uh, slap them in there. Uh, if you do want to use the the dollar dollar sign, the super chat, that's what they call it, um, that makes it virtually unmissable. I, I can't guarantee that we won't miss it, but it makes it a lot less likely that we'll miss it. We do do maximum inept, but that's the super chat. Put it in a big colour box, and hopefully we won't miss it. You also have a couple of extra mods tonight, potentially. Uh, Dad, or Mike Mountain, is in. He's now a mod. And Colin from Festa 67 Workshop is also a new mod. I don't know if he's in tonight, though. Uh, so I've got a couple of extra people helping to mod because only two of us and we miss a lot of things that go on in chat. So the more help we can get, the better. So welcome to those two guys. You all know Dad anyway. Uh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something. Yes, uh, don't, don't forget, of course, uh, if you send a question and answer for the giveaways later on and we use your question and answer, we'll send you a sticker. So if you want a guaranteed sticker, send a question and answer later on. But if, you get, if, you're, if you're unable to watch, I'll start that again. Let me just rewind. If you're watching somewhere and you can't see the live chat, if you're not watching on YouTube, just click on the little YouTube icon in the bottom right-hand corner down here somewhere on your on your screen. That will take you to the YouTube channel where you can see the actual live chat. And do join in the live chat if you can, because we do do sticker giveaways and stuff later on. Uh, but if you're unable to get into live chat at all, you want to send us a question, just pop that through email as well. So ted at emodels.co.uk. I know the live chat's working because people have been in it for like a week. I don't yes. think they go home. I think they stay there after the previous show and they're still there when this one starts. Yeah. Um, I, I got in fairly early and it was going before. Like, I don't know what the first person in was because it won't go back that far. But uh, I know Sergeant Bone's been counting down minutes until we go live. Yes. I, hope, I didn't notice the zero go now in instruction, but I'm sure it was there. Um, blue Gladic says dadpla. Yeah. 
Uh, so I can't read back from the first comments because, you know, I say the first, first one I've got up there is uh, George Flauter. Uh, but uh, say Sergeant Bone was probably there first. Uh, LD has been in there. Um, sorry, yeah, bah, bah, bah. Sergeant Bones, Mike Mountley. They were chatting amongst themselves for a little while. Uh, we've, I've, got, I've, we've, uh, we've been quietly wondering if LD, who is with us tonight, has maybe had perhaps a sherbet this evening at some point. It, it seems to be a little bit off the rails. Sort of yeah, there's right. a lot of jolly comments from LD tonight. So I'm wondering if perhaps he's, he's been near the gym cabinet. Perhaps Could be, bit. yeah. <laughs> um, we have Thermonuclear Bobbington, which I'm assuming is the Bobbington that we all know and love, but with another name change. Or it might be a cousin. I don't know. You know. Could be a big family and they're all kind of got some similar names. Could be, but they're only allowed in one at a time. Could be. Could be. Uh, one computer, only one of them can sign in. This is true, yeah. Uh, Tony Blackwell's in, uh, Sergeant Bone still, a lot of training there. Mike's in, uh, Lord Barkley. E models is in, I don't know why they're br bright and yellow, it's very annoying. Uh, yeah, there we go. Same name, Zadstar, Michael Jackman, Ickle Pete, and other people that I've probably missed, but uh, Adam Clark says evening all. Evening and all. Sprug, Sprug Addict says uh, something. Uh, I've scrolled past and it's gone now, but there. I'll, I'll pick up any you might have missed. Uh, George Flauter's in. I said that. Uh, was Matty's, the first one. Met Matty's Metal Detecting South Wales from South Wales is in. Uh, you were in South Wales, weren't you, Chris? No, I was in North Wales. I know. Similar yeah. Wales, but different. It's still Wales. Uh, Michael Brown is in. Uh, Rusting Customs Models is in. Sprugler Addict. I think you mentioned Sprugler, didn't you? Yep. Uh, Phil Kett is in. James Chapman. Uh, Dave from Butcher That Model is in. Welcome, Dave. Tony Blackwell. Uh, Jamie Boone, who's already sent us an email. Uh, Smoo is in. The Smoo is in at the house. Hey, hey. Smoo, you ain't there, son. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't know what I was doing there. I'll just stop. Uh, uh, Spinner Q8 is in. He's got a question for a giveaway. He says, what is Sprue Glue no longer allowed to say in chat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Skipper Ted is in. Ted is in. I'm here if I can stay awake. Hey, Ted. Hello, Ted. Welcome, yeah. and I hope you're still awake. Everybody's now happy that Ted turned up. Yeah. Uh, Matt Bradford and Griff MJ are in as well. So I think that's most people uh, we've got there. So even well, hello to everybody. If we've missed you, we do apologise. Uh, uh, Griff MJ says North Wales is Gogland. I don't don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. It must uh, be like a particular insult or something. I don't know. If it is, I'm a, I apologise, but I don't think it is. So. We might have said something insulting now, and not even might have been. I'm pretty sure it wasn't worth because it didn't have enough L's in it. Hmm. <sighs> so um, yes, yeah, so, so Ted's in. Uh, I was about to say, "How are you doing, Ted?" But we don't want to be pushing Ted to type lots of responses. <laughs> so if, if you need to if ask Ted a okay, question, don't reply. Yeah, if you need to ask Ted a question, make sure it's a really, really important question. <clears throat> yes. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Ray from Malta's in. Ray Aquilina. Uh, oh, just an update as well. Um, Ted did send me the, I think, as far as I know, Ted posted out a whole load of stickers last week, I think. I think. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, there's no one now waiting for stickers. I've got a couple of big stickers to send out from last week. I just need to get some envelopes. Well, I think I might have done them. I'm not sure. Um, but I might have some big stickers sent out. But I think other than that, all the stickers and stuff have been sent out. So. We're assuming that Ted sent them out. He might have only written half the addresses and got bored. Yes. So, yes. But if you haven't received your stickers in the next two weeks, do let us know because there'll probably be a couple that got missed somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Gogled is north in Welsh. Ah, okay. That'd be Gogled. Gogled. It's still only got one L in it. Yeah, but it's got two Ds. It's right. at the end. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, yes, so I've, I've been away this weekend, in fact, in North Wales. I, I had a little holiday, just went away. That's not, and, that's not um, South Wales, is it? Not South Wales, it's a bit further north than that. If it was South Wales, that's really easy, I can get there in a day. <laughs> but uh, in the North Wales, a little bit further. So I, I popped up, I stopped in Birmingham, and then went into Wales, and then came back up. Went and saw some owls. Some owls. 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 They're, they're like, like puffins, but different. Cool, they're like puffins, but not cute. So, yes, um, I've been doing that. Um, you went all the way to North Wales just to see owls? Pretty much, yeah. My, my wife likes owls. Mm. Uh, and my daughter actually adopted one for uh, from this place. Okay. Uh, a year or so ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, so we thought we'd go and visit that one. Mm. So we did. And we found yeah. it. We thought, we thought we couldn't find it to begin with, but then we did find it. It was, it was in a corner and not moving very much. But what, an owl? An owl. 
was just sitting there going, oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even doing that, it was just sitting there. It wasn't I thought it, I thought it, it might like have been that. stuffed and nailed to the perch, but it did move. So it wasn't just muttering like that scary bloke in the pub that just sits in the corner and everybody ignores him. Um yeah, uh, Phil Lewis says it must have been a hoot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tony Blackwell says they're nighttime puffins. Uh, Les Williams has a question. He says, Question, can you get the stickers in the USA? You can't buy them in the USA, but you can buy them and have them sent to the USA. We'll happily send them anywhere. And uh, e models do send, do ship to the US. Yep. So if you uh, order from e models, ask them for a sticker and they'll probably chuck one in the box for you. Yeah, they probably do. Any, I think they do for yeah, a lot of the others anyway. Smart, um, just think for, for international uh, people that are international people, is there such a thing as international people? Is that a thing? For international people, people who want, in, I'll shut up. Um, e models do ship to most locations. Um, there are some things that they can't do <coughs> certain places though, aren't there? There are some restrictions. Yes, some places they can't send things like aerosols and solvent-based products like glue. So um, most places they can ship stuff. If you're if you're out overseas, are you not in the UK, and you do have any problems putting an order through, it's probably that there's something in your order that's not shippable. But if you're ever not sure, just just give them a call or just drop them an email. But they ship to most destinations. Obviously, they don't ship to like North Korea or Antarctica, space. I am sure they're working on it. Yes. <laughs> yes, we now ship to North Korea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Sergeant Bone says, Fox, you must ask Chris what he's been working on. Have I missed something there? I don't think so. don't know. But, okay. uh, but we will go through what we've been working on at some point anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up with it. Yes. Uh, can Puffins see in the dark, says Spruggly Raddick. Uh, yeah, they use a torch. Oh, which reminds me, I forgot to get Odo out. How do they, how do they hold the torch? Do they hold it in their beak? Mm -hmm. Do they hold a torch in their beak? No, they have a little thing on the head. Torch on oh, the head. yeah. Duh. Oh, right, okay. Duh. You think, that's, you, think, you think they have the Aurora Borealis in uh, Orkney, but it's not. It's just all the puffins with the torches. <laughs> on the head. <laughs> Bouncing off the clouds. So you should go looking for them at night. It'd be easier. Yeah, you just look for all the beams of light. Cool. <laughs> <sighs> Paul Dicamato says there's no problems with them shipping stuff to Canada here. Canada, hey. I was about to, I was doing that, but I wasn't actually playing the Canadian national anthem, so it doesn't really work that joke. That gives you one in the background, so you're allowed to play the national anthem and not salute next time. You've got one in the back. My favourite piece of music. <laughs> uh, Sprugro Addict says it's a mining puffy. Yeah. There you go, then. Was that you? That was outside of me. It wasn't actually me personally. I don't make that sound <laughs> of open noise often. But Your taxi's there. I thought you got a really big it's microwave. It's still fairly warm, so I've got the window open, but I haven't got a fan on tonight. So, no, yeah. I've not got a fan on. It's not that warm here. No, so it's, it's not It's not too hot. It's just about right. Yeah. It's been raining a lot. It's been raining a lot as well last, over the weekend, apparently, here. Yes, we've had, uh, we've had the rains. It was quite good. We had the torrential rains. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, apologies to all the peeps, says Speedy Curator. I haven't had said hello yet. I'm dashing around a bit this evening and haven't even had tea yet. Plus, I have a Tamir stand to package up. Where has today gone? <laughs> uh, Stephen Hill Harris says, I just this minute received my E-Models mug from last week, and he's in Clarksville, Ohio. Talk about fast shipping. So there you go. Yeah, then. Less than a week. Yes, less than a week. It's quicker than the stickers. Yeah, there's a thing flying in here. Go away. Is it a puffy? I was about... I, I, it's a really, really small puffy. <laughs> like... It's a quantum puffin. <clears throat> uh, Sprugler Addict says you've got 79 fans. You've got 79 fans. I don't know who that is. I think in, instead of actually blowing air fan, I think it means people that like us. Ah, Probably 79 is a bit higher. A bit of a froggy throat tonight. <clears throat> I've not had a cigarette in like five weeks now. I've quit smoking. It's brilliant. So but Now you've got a bad real, throat. I've got a real froggy throat at the moment. So I may have to clean my throat a few times. Uh, Phil East says, evening all. Oh, sorry I'm late. I started an ill-advised phone update like a noob. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, never it's a good time to do updates and things. Turn, turn them off before we come on. It's not like I start like a gaming live stream and suddenly realise I've got an Xbox dashboard update. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so what have you been doing this week, Fox? What have I been doing this week? Uh, not a lot this week. Um, at the moment, we're still waiting for Mama Fox to get some surgery sorted out. You remember, Mama Fox isn't very well. It's long with long with Skipper Ted, everybody's everybody's ill at the minute. So I'm um, still waiting for them to sort that out. So I've not been able to get on with anything like filming wise, just because I don't know. I can't. 
commit to anything. Yeah, so it turns out you, you have had a couple of weeks to do it, but you didn't know that at the time, so it's always, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's like I can't start anything major no. now because I might have to suddenly stop suddenly. So so I've not really done much. I've done a little bit of work on my Warhammer army. I've done some Space Marines down there and a couple of some army just, but just a little bit because I had a little bit of time. So I can, I can, I've been doing little bits of painting that I can just drop at a moment's notice, but I can't do any official filming or anything like that. I not start anything big. No, but I've been working on my armor. Just, I've just got a very basic paint coat on these down so far. So I've got them at the front. You can't really see because it's the, I can't even zoom in really. Is that the front or the back? Uh, hang on. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's kind of not under the light. So, so uh, we've got, what have we got? We've got the, I call it the inner frame, but it's not a Gundam. I've got the inner frame done, all the metallics on that. I've just started painting the armor parts, which is going to be an orange color, as you can tell by the orange. Well, there's still tons to do. I've just I've just got the basic colors down for now. So, uh, yeah, so they're coming along. But that's just been in the little bit of spare time I've had because I can I can sit and do my own stuff. But I've got some, you know, some proper grown-up builds I've got to do in filming and stuff, and I, I can't start them because I don't. I, I might have to stop at a moment's notice. So, yeah, it's a bit frustrating, but we're getting there. We're getting there. What about you, do? What have you been doing? Yeah, uh, Jamie Bone says, Is that a Transformer, Fox? No, it's oh, Warhammer's dude. That joke only works if it's a Gumpla, anyway. Yeah. It doesn't really work if it's not a Gumpla. Oh, they're almost Gumpla, aren't they? Yeah, no. thing. Robot things. Uh, what have I been doing? I, I've just finished over there my. Um, Latest diorama, which is probably not going to be visible now. I'll bring it away from the lights too much, but it's um, based on the uh, Star Wars Episode Seven, uh, Jakku abandoned Falcon scene with a crashed Tie Fighter down there. Mint. Um, the Falcon's one that I built a while back, and just uh, thought it was time to put it into a diorama. So is I've been the, doing that. Is that the Bandai One One Forty Fourth by the chance? All One Forty Four stuff. Yep, yeah. I've got okay. uh, little. Crash Tie Fighter there, also 144, and a couple of the people that came with the Falcon, just to add a little bit of interest to it and uh, add it all up. So I finished doing that. Is there a couple uh, of hours ago? There, is that little Finn and little Ray running along? Little, little Finn and Ray, and a BB-8 as well. A little BB-8, the front. molecule. It's BB it's really, really, really tiny. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's all fun. Uh, so I have <laughs> that to edit and upload to my personal channel during the week sometime, and then. I shall be starting on this. Ba, 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 ba. Now this is a transformer. I know that much. Oh, dear. And um, yeah, I I know nothing about these. I built one, just snapping it together, and the simpler M M G H G H G H G. Yes. See, I, they got letters and names in it. This is the uh, real grade excitement embodied. Apparently, it says so on yes. the box, so it must be. Um, so I've been flicking through the instructions on how to do that and should be starting that during the week. So uh, next week, there should be some progress on that. Little bits of legs built or whatever. Yeah. And uh, in a couple of weeks, no doubt. You are doing that as an e-models build, aren't you? This is the e-models build, yeah. So in a couple of weeks, that should be the first part of that. Hopefully, will be up on the e-models page or the e-models YouTube page uh, for your viewing pleasure. Yeah, careful now. Don't make a girl a promise. <laughs> no, it should, it should be. There's no guarantees, but... I'm actually right, looking, I'm actually looking forward weeks. to building that because you know I've seen you do the HG, real grade. For those who don't know, real grade is like a halfway step between master grade. Uh, it's almost master grade. It's kind of almost the complexity of master grade, but with a, a bit more detail on the outside, on the armor and stuff, which is more towards perfect. It's like a combination of a master grade and perfect grade. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but they're like nice. the, the one forty fourth scale, which is why Chris can do it. Sergeant Bone says, yeah, Chris, that was what I wanted to see. But I don't know if he was talking about that or that. But you've seen both of them, so there you go. Great. Yeah. Uh, James Chapman says, Fox, talking about Warhammer, there's a Partworks magazine to build Warhammer armies like Space Marines coming out soon. So maybe you could do six episodes of that. <laughs> six episodes. <laughs> I, I saw that a while ago. And they've, they've unfortunately, what they've done is they've given it the same name as a, as a Warhammer card game or something from a few years ago. So trying to find anything about it on the go on the oh, Googles is like up with being drowned in the other information. Yeah, it's like when somebody comes up with a name that's it's, it's it's a name that's been used for a different Warhammer product in the past, which is a really bad idea. Um, but I saw it and it's like I don't know how they're going to stretch that out. It's like because you're literally going to get like one Space Marine with a magazine. How? Well, you can build big armies. The next, though, the next, yeah, so. 
But it's like you'll get one, then you get the next. Or like you get the, I think the first one you get like a space marine or two, and then you get like one of the paints. It's like it's going to be the <laughs> slowest build ever. But I don't know how they're going to pad it out to how many episodes, issues are they going to be. I don't know if the is it going to be like a big thing where there's like twenty of each side and terrain and stuff. I don't know if they're going to be giving you the big night things. Then that'll be you know. 10 episodes, 20, 20 parts for that, wouldn't it? No, okay. it looks like, from the pictures, it looks like you're going to have a a, 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 a a paper or card tech play mat, maybe a couple of shipping containers, uh, and then maybe five Space Marines and five, I don't know if they're Chaos Space Marines or Chaos Cult or um, Gene Steeler Cultists or something. But it's like, what, you've got five dudes, five dudes, and a, and a play mat. That's going to be like three issues, and it's not going to be that exciting. It's, it's, it's yeah, um, Speedy Q8 says 1.4 BB8. How? Uh, Sprugger Addict says speed. It's a ball bearing. It's it's not. It's really tiny. It's it's literally very very small. But I painted some little orange bits and silver bits on it, so it's it's quite well. Hmm. Um, I've got a serious question. Which one? Uh, from Michael Brown. He says, "Hey guys, aside from spillage, is there any need to use the cup cap on an airbrush?" I haven't found a one. I, I don't use one, so I hope not. <laughs> What, a cap or an airbrush? A cap. <clears throat> Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, silent coughing. We can add our own noises to it. I'm, I'm doing all comedy cough mimes there and nobody can see it because there's no little window at the bottom, is there? Because there's only two of us. Um, uh, there is. There are a couple of benefits. He says, aside from spillage, spillage is the main benefit. If you've ever watched me do airbrushing, when I do airbrushing, I, I get it caught up in other cables and things. Hang on. Oh, yeah. When I do airbrushing, I'm like this. Dee, 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 dee. I'm doing that with the airbrush because I like to <laughs> fling the cap off. <laughs> but I do slow airbrushing, but if I'm doing like blending or anything like that, I'll do lots of this. And especially if you're doing a gloss varnish, that stuff goes everywhere. Um, but yeah, the, the other main advantage is that um, it also helps stop paints that dry out quickly, drying out quickly. If you're in a particularly warm environment, um, and you've got a paint that, that evaporates or dries out really fast, like lacquers can dry out really fast, um, and you're spraying, it's drying out. If you've not got a lid on there, if you're in a hot environment, it's drying out. Uh, and all that happens is it dries out, it sinks down to the bottom of the cup into the nozzle and blocks your airbrush, you'll get more blockages. So it stops paint drying out as fast in the cup, and it might help reduce blockages. But not all the time, it's probably a minimal benefit, but it does help stop paint curing in the cup if you know what i mean especially if you're doing a long paint session of you know an hour or more it just makes life a bit easier i see well the, the reason i don't have them problems is i use the very small cup and only a small bit of paint because doing 144 stuff i don't, don't need yeah. a lot of paint yeah no so, i mean yeah. I, use, I use i use the massive cup on mine because i was painting like one point like a three foot tall master chief so yeah that was that was the big cup on my head <laughs> and by big cup i mean as many rattles cans as i could use <laughs> uh phil lewis asked me have i got the death star attack set yet uh no i haven't actually bought any new kits for a while um i've decided i've got quite a big stash of personal kits to build and obviously doing the ones for remodels now as well i don't need to go and buy stuff because i've got stuff i don't see the point in having a big pilot i know it's almost heretical but uh i don't see the point in having a, a stash of 300 kits to, that i'm never going to get around to building or going to lose interest in or you know the shops might as well keep them i might as well keep some cash and I'll get them when I need them. So, yeah, it, it's something I've seen and quite like the look of, but I haven't bothered going to get it yet. Count, counterpoint, if you haven't got a massive stash, you're doing it wrong. Well, yeah. Here at Team Models, we encourage people to buy as many models as possible. No, just, you don't need to buy them all now. <laughs> yeah. Your models aren't going anywhere. They're still going to be there, so you can buy one a month. For, and... <laughs> I, always, I always said I wouldn't build up a stash. And the thing is, even if you try not to, you kind of do. Because I suffer from that thing where I, I sit there and I'm, I'm in the middle of a build and I'll be like, oh, look at this model that I've just noticed that I didn't know about it. I need to build it. I'm going to buy it now because it'll only be in production for another 25 years. So I better buy it now <laughs> just in case it's, you know, and then I order it. And then I'm like, before it's even arrived, I've already seen the next shiny thing. So I I just got the attention span of a whatever hasn't got a very good attention span when it comes to shiny things. So, yeah, I've got a bit of a stash building up. Uh, Smooth says he's got the Bandai BB-8. He's going to try and light it up. Yeah, I, I didn't try and light up the 144th scale one because they don't make lights that small. Hmm. Um, uh, there's a question. RLE82 asks, what airbrush do you guys use? I'm on a... Um, I've got two. 
My go-to normal regular airbrush is a Neo Free Water, but with the trigger action. Same here, actually. Yep. Yep, because I can't. I can't do that because I can't bend. I can't bend the end of my fingers. I can bend them, but I can't voluntarily bend them. I just don't have the. So doing that for more than five minutes is very uncomfortable for me. So that's perfect. But I've also got a Neo. I've got a new Water Revolution as well for heavy duty stuff. Yeah, what are you, what are you I've, on, Chris? I've got exactly the same. One of those, the triggery um, Neo. Jiggery, jiggery. Uh, and I have. Oh, is your compressor you. constantly turned on all the time? Is my compressor turned on all the time? No. Yeah. It's not on at the moment. Well, air just came out of it. I might still well have some tank, some in the tank. Ah, uh, I always have. I always have my tank out. Um, I have an old, uh, cheaper, uh, one up from the really cheap, nasty ones. But not quite a Chinese knockoff, but quite a Chinese knockoff. It might be sort of next to China knockoff, uh, which I intended to use for primers and knocking around, but I just don't. Hmm. <laughs> it's there if I need it, but I don't think I'll ever yeah. need it because the other one's just so great. I mean, I, I mean, I tend, I tend to use my revolution for anything where I want to use solvents because this is one of the early neos, so I can't be sure it's solvent safe or not. <clears throat> so if I've got anything where I want to use solvents. Or where I need to be able to clean it out with solvents, mm -hmm. um, I'll use my Revolution, which is a 0.5, which I also want lots of coverage at the same time as well. I'll go for that. Uh, James Chapman says, <clears throat> "Sorry about <clears throat> about the Warhammer magazine." He says, "Fox issue one comes with three Space Marines, uh, sp Space Marine intercessors, uh, Abaddon Black, Balthazar Gold, McCrag Blue, and one brush." I mean, I'd, it, <clears throat> if they're the normal size paints, then that's probably going to be, you know, well, the paints are like two or three quid a piece, aren't they? Yeah, I think you actually, I think you actually, it's, it, it's kind of worth it when you get the paints and stuff. It makes it worth it. But the frustration of just getting one figure for a month or a week. Yeah, or I mean, the, the first issue always gives you more than any other issue is ever. Yeah, going and, then it's, and it's always a bit cheaper than any other issue is going to be. I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's, it's, if, if you're already into building stuff, you just go and get the figures and the paints. But if if it's for somebody who's you know not tried them before or it was a bit of an introduction because you will get like the board and stuff so it might work out cheaper than going and buying one of the box sets that comes with the play mat and the scenery and stuff like that it might work out cheaper than that there's nothing wrong with it i wouldn't do it because i can just go and get a box set so yes yeah so, <clears throat> philly uh, says he's got the first five issues if i want them i'll, I'll pass but thank you <laughs> i only got them for the minis does that mean yeah. you're not going to let you're just going to let him have the paper? Yeah, you can't, I can't keep the paints and everything. I think the real test with it because it's a, it's like a, it's a part work again, like many others. Is I think the real test with it is whether it's 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 worth whatever you get at the end works out cheaper than going to the store and actually it's store and actually buying those figures or those kits or whatever. So I, d I don't know. I've not seen what yeah. the end game uh, of it. I mean, I'm building the the half scale R two D two, which is. A, not available as a general item the, the way they're, they're doing it and yes it's going to be expensive but it's over two years and i'm enjoying building it as i go along so it's just one of those things that you know if you want to do it do it if you don't nobody's making you yeah. lord barkley the third says uh, ideal for kids he gets it for his daughter that's what they all yeah. say yeah yeah i mean to, to like serious builders like us it's we, we wouldn't need to get it because we can just get the thing itself but for things like for kids and things like that it's, it's a pretty good idea uh, Sprugal um, Addict's asking if you got his email yesterday. <coughs> yes, I did. <coughs> uh, I do apologise, excuse me. Ryan Riley says you should empty your tank after shutting off your compressor. Condensation can build up inside and rust the tank out. Mm, mm. I always empty my tank. I, I'll rephrase that. <laughs> I, I shall start emptying it immediately, well, not immediately, but later. Yeah. Yeah. I generally think, if I, you know, I'm going to be using it later on or the next day. There's no point. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tend to, I tend not to be used for a few days and I yeah I tend to because I, I actually I actually kind of I'm too lazy to enjoy airbrushing that much so I tend to leave long gaps between airbrushing sessions so I always empty mine out just to be safe uh, Lord Bartley says he can buy more paints and then blame his daughter yes yeah. this is the advantage of those part works we needed yeah. them for other things yeah. yeah get it for the kids then you've got reason to go to the Warhammer store <laughs> anyway other part works are available indeed um yeah so i did that did that that's that what what are we talking about this week then Any, anything, anything happening uh i don't know does anybody have any questions to put in the chat or we have we have some questions 
But we've got some shout outs for later Ooh. on. Yeah, we have shout outs, which, which is a novel. We don't often get shout outs, yeah, but we're, we're always welcoming for them as we are welcoming for anything to talk about because otherwise, you know, we just sit here quietly and it's like being in detention. Yes. So uh, come up with us, come up with something for us to talk about. It's going to be 80s TV, but we yeah, can, we can be optimistic. It might be something different. Uh, Smooth says once a week is usually enough for emptying your tank unless it's a really <coughs> humid climate. Yes, steady smooth. Oh, hang on, I need to clear my throat. Oh, he's gone quiet again. And if I talk, then you can't see him, but you can only see me. But I think he's coughing and sneezing. And he's oh, back real, in the room. Real froggy throat at the minute. Oh, because I'm not drinking 35 cups of coffee a day. That's what it is. Have, have you been eating frogs? I've been eating um, anything I can get my hands on. I know you do outside, like insects and stuff now. So. Outside quitting the, the, the cigarettes is the bit of that develops. Yeah, I, I've never smoked and I've got no excuse for that. <laughs> Yours is all natural. Yeah, it's taking like years and years of neglect to get a body like this. Yeah, I've got an entire lifetime of neglect. <laughs> I'm allergic. I know I'm allergic to exercise of any kind because whenever I exercise, I get like sweaty and I get cramps and pains, and that's a sure. Yeah, sign. I'm sure that's not good for you. You should that's stop an allergic reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that sounds that way. Pain and sweating. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's have a look and see. Speed says depends how much you drink, so I'm getting older, I need to empty more frequently. <laughs> All bought and paid for though, Chris, says me. <laughs> yeah. Uh right, so we we've got uh what's in store to come. Uh we're doing the no the new format that we've been doing for the like, past few weeks where there is a theme, but we're not gonna tell you what the theme is. Yeah. You have to guess and uh, let us know, and you can win a sticker. Yes. We'll yeah. also be giving away stickers anyway, and mugs, and a kit. Now, I will, I will, I will tell you now, because I know what the theme is for the thing tonight, and he, it had me scratching my head for a bit. <laughs> so there is this possibility that somebody may not get the theme tonight. Yeah, it's all, it's all my fault. I, I, I've, I've done the watching store this week, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did see a, a post earlier that I thought I would mention, but then I've forgotten about it, and... See it. I, I shall go back and look. Fox can talk while I'm reading. Duh, I'm just looking through the chat as well. <laughs> <laughs> we should really organise things so we're not doing that. It yeah. wasn't I mean, about... good, uh, one, one good thing at the minute is that the weather does seem to be turning. So for those of us who are in the UK and have spent the last few, well, the last month and a half frustrated because we can't sit at the workbench and do any work because it's been a billion degrees, um, the weather has started to turn, so I've started to be able to actually sit down at the bench now and do little bits. Like I said, I've not been able to do anything major, like video builds or anything like that, um, but I have started to be able to sit down and do a little bit of work. So I'm hoping, uh, if you know my, if you follow me on my own channel, you'll know I've got um, the next big major bill for me is the Strike Rouge Rotori uh, Master Grade, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that I need to start on. Uh, and then I will, once that's been done, I'll be doing my little tiny U-boat that I'm, I haven't got to hand, but I got a little tiny chibi U-boat that I'm going to do as an e-models build, uh, and then I have the the um, the Sazabi version car master grade on my schedule once the little U-boat is done. So look forward to that as well. I found it. I found I found the thing I was going to answer. It's uh, Paul Du Tomaso asks, "Where do we upload pics for rating?" That would be the gallery. Yes, uh, emodels.co.uk forward slash gallery. Or if you go or, to the e-model site, it will say gallery across the top. Click, yeah, click on that. There's a menu option for it. Yeah. So, yes. um, just while, while you're there, re, um, don't forget to review other people and give them stars and if you like them, because otherwise we won't be looking at them for the gallery next month. Yes. Just to, to remind for those of people that might not know, um, every month on, at the start of each month, Chris, uh, Paul, Ted, no, not Paul. Chris, no, Ted, me and I, Chris, Ted and Fox and I. Uh, we all get together and pick one of the best five star rate. Well, we pick a five star rated gallery entry uh, who wins a sweet prize. Um, so, if you've never done it before, if you've got some finished builds and you've got pictures of them, get uploading them to emodels.co.uk forward slash gallery. You can do just one, just one per build is fine. Uh, we, we try and say don't do work in progress pictures because they're nice to show off, but we wouldn't use those as anything to judge by. Um, so, do get uploading your pictures and get reviewing other people's works. And then the more that you review, the more review you. Chat uh, seems to have gone on about vaping now for some reason. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Somebody said, uh, "Don't smoke vape." I don't want to do either. No. Uh, Speed says a guy walked past me earlier vaping. I thought his head was on fire for a moment. Yeah. There's a lot of smoke. Well, it's not smoke, is it? It's like vapor or steam or whatever. Yeah, it's just as toxic and harmful. It just goes everywhere. Yes. Don't do either. 
because I, 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 I've quit now and I'm like, what, five weeks? And I'm like, actually sleeping properly and I can taste things. In some situations, I can smell things I couldn't smell before and it's not always a good thing, but yeah, hey. Um, <laughs> Mike Mountain says he's done his cheapy U boat as the Yellow Submarine. Oh, that's what the mentions of Yellow Submarine were the other day that I kept picking up on and not knowing what they were. Uh, and Ted says he may start a toon tank. It depends what he can fix up. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Ted and I, I think, have both got the Sherman. So if you want to do your Sherman, Ted, do feel free. I'm not I'm not fussed if you want to do your Sherman. I'll get the little U-boat, though, because it's the one I got. I showed it last week. Because when we went to E-Models, I did pick up a Sherman. Because um, Ted and I were thinking we could do another Christmas build this year and maybe just both do the Sherman. Because <clears throat> last year we did a, a four-hour-long live stream where we just built and painted a couple of Toon Tanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we were thinking of doing the same this year as another sort of three or four hour long live stream. But really, you're limited to what you can do in three or four hours. You can't build a plane because you've got seams to fill and things. So it's really going to be probably another toon tank or something similar. But I also picked up the other day the little Chibi U boat. If you've not seen that, it's available now in the e model store. Uh, the little Chibi U boat, which is absolutely adorable. Uh, and which I'm going to do when I finish the Strike Rouge Autori, I'll do that as a quick e models build in the middle. Because my main e-models build is going to be months away yet, my big tank, because I've got to finish other stuff first. So, yes, yeah, so if you're not built one of these, it's good. How, how adorable is that? I mean, look at it. Look at it. It's, it's totes of dorbs. I, I did the, the space shuttle. You did the, yeah, you did the TV that. space shuttle, didn't but, you? Uh, yeah, that was, that was good fun. Uh, Ryan Riley has a question. He says, any advice on painting a wooden deck on a warship? I've got one of the small men kits like Fox. Um, there's a million different ways you can do it. But really, you just want to use wood tones. Um, to me, I do a colour called Deck Tan, which is surprisingly kind of Deck Tan coloured. Um, I would personally, if I was doing it, because I've got a space... I'm looking at it now. It's there above the above the monitor. I've got a space battleship Yamato to, to do still. Uh, and I'm going to give it wooden deck effect. And I'm going to use something like Deck Tan. Um, and then uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use deck tan, but then I'll use like a slightly darker thinned brown wash just to get into all the gaps between the planks. That kind of scale, you're not going to get wood grain, obviously. You don't worry about that. But I would deck tan or some similar cups, light sandy colour, get a, a wash of some slightly darker brown, brownie reddy colour with slight, very slight red tinge just to get into all the recesses. Uh, and then you can very carefully dry brush and ever so slightly darker, but still not ready brown, like a darker brown, but a, a, a colder brown around some of the parts where the deck meets, say, edges. Just dry brush that in just to get a bit of shading. Or you could do it as pre-shading or post-shading. I'd do it as post-shading. Our resident boat expert's head is actually still in chat. He says, uh, do a tan paint and then a black wash for planking. Oh, there you go. Black wash, and that'll work. I've actually got some uh, naval weathering, uh, which is dark wash for wood deck. Which is probably ideal for doing a dark wash on a wood deck. Yeah, I, I would suspect that's good for a dark wash on a wood deck. The one thing I did learn though, uh, when I was doing my U-boat, trying to untangle all my wrist things, when I was doing my U-boat, uh, was that they were, I don't know about boats, but on German World War II U-boats, the decks were often started off black because they were wooden decks, but they were painted with a water repellent black coating which gave grip and repelled the water, protected the wood. It wore off as the as the months went by when the ship was out on tour. But um, if it's just a freshly minted in the harbour, not gone out yet, the deck would actually be black. I don't know about boats and ships, but on German U-boats, they were usually painted black. Or covered uh, Ted, in the Ted says, remember, teak decking will be bleached. Mm. So there you go. By assume on battleships, they didn't do that. <laughs> Uh, Zasta says naval weathering for weathering navels. I, I haven't tried it. I haven't even opened the bolt, your bolt yet, so I don't know what it's exactly. It definitely says na naval weathering. Phil Lewis says at my age, my navel is naturally weathered. Uh, you could try, I mean, I, I would also try something like, um, I know I say about it a lot, but you could even do, um, if you wanted slightly, slightly dirty decking. Dirty decking, that sounds like a movie. <laughs> um, you could go for, instead of a, a, a straight black wash, you could go for something like your, your more darker greys, like your Starship Filth or your Ammo Streaking Grime or something like that. If it's a really small bit of detail you're painting, I find Streaking Grime, Ammo Streaking Grime is brilliant because you just put it on, get all your paints down, don't even need to varnish it, 
get it on there, just paint it on like it just uh, sort of stack carelessly, on, really, you mean. and then give it 10 minutes and wipe it off with the cotton bud. Uh, and it, it stays in all the recesses, but it also gets some shading around edges and stuff, and it gives that nice post-shade effect. So slap it on and wipe it off. Yeah, yeah slap it on, rub it off. Cotton bud, there you okay. go, dry cotton buds. Uh, Ted asks, what do you do with the fluff from navels? There's probably some. We have a guy that comes yeah. around and says he's buys scrap metal, so there's probably yeah, some uh, fluff. Here's this week's collection. <laughs> yeah, I've got some dust bunnies <laughs> for you. Uh early 82 says i'll get the message to knit, knit sweaters with it hmm Sprugly radic says how do i turn my big s at the start of chat into a picture you have to go into your youtube profile and upload yeah. a picture it's your your icon thing from your yeah, to channel your, your channel and settings and that it might take you to a google plus page if even anybody uses google plus apart from info wars now yeah, i don't I think know. you might have to use google plus to set it up but yeah yeah go into your settings and it's in there somewhere uh, it might not very... change. initially you might have to sort of save it and back out and come back but yeah youtube do is that, not do that in your own time not while you're watching us yeah don't do it now do it in a couple of hours but youtube unfortunately is not the easiest thing to figure out when you're doing anything setting up a channel or it's not easy yeah uh dave at butcher that model says ted grip it in some tweezers and use it for fine paint chipping mm -hmm. it's one one use yeah we, we always like to use things that we've got laying around so yeah Joanna Hammond has sent me a picture, which I can't actually share because it's on my iPad. Uh, but a picture of a deck. Titled Deck Picture. Looks like the Titanic. The, the Titanic, Joanna. It's got a very Titanic-y looking front. I bet it's not the Titanic. Um, looks rather mint, actually. Uh, I can't show it to you, so this, this is kind of pointless me doing that. But yes, it's a very nice looking deck. Um, Von Holdinghausen says, a teak deck gets silvery grey in just a few weeks. It never has a wood colour, unless it's a very new deck. Okay. So it's, they're being walks on, aren't they? So, <clears throat> yeah, I would expect bits around the edges that don't get walked on very much will look a lot newer than bits in the middle. Uh, Joanna Hamm Hammond says, it is. So I'm assuming, yes, it's, it's a Titanic. Oh, well cool. Spotted. So all, all she sent me was the, the pointy bit at the front. The, it was basically the deck from the bow and the deck from the stern with nothing on them, just the, the piece from the kit. But it had that kind of like two bits like that going across. And I'm like, that looks like a Titanic, that. I'm just dead clever, me, aren't I? Actually, it's just the most popular boat you could guess from that. Well, I'm sure lots of boats had that exact similar design. Uh, LD says, I don't even know how to find my YouTube messages anymore. Uh, yeah. You look on YouTube, I think. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're killing that off. I think it's going to community now. Oh, some channel, my channel's got a community setting where it's like a lie. It's like a. Ooh. Not everybody's got it. Um, and uh, Sergeant Bone says, actually, Dave, that might work. So I think <laughs> yeah, that might just work. <laughs> some some fluff making its way into models very shortly. Mm. And Sprugler Haddock says, question: What should I have as my picture? <laughs> Food, a kebab. Pot yeah. noodle, there you go. Pot noodle of some sort. And I think you've got to have something that is something that says it's you. Yeah. Pot so noodle. a nice, a nice color, and and then something that because the picture is only very, very small on most little screens. Hmm. So it's going to be saying it's noticeable and recognizable as being you. Yeah. Uh, Skipper Ted says, Joanna Hammond, try googling tribal class. I think it means frigates. Uh, they were the last naval ships to have wooden decking. There's probably more chance of having the pictures in color. All right, because yeah, a lot of old wooden decks are going to be from old wooden ships, yes. and they didn't have colour back then, did they? So look up tribal class frigates. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, the old boy says so it's the Olympic. Is that was that the class of that was the that was the sister ship for the Titanic? Ah, all right, okay, the one that uh, didn't. Uh, <clears throat> I need to clear my throat again. Excuse me. Uh, Sergeant Bones is saying, mm, "Pot noodle must resist." Mm -hmm. Never resist. No, don't resist. Noodle. Don't resist. Noodle. I've got a big stash downstairs of Korean death noodle snacks. <laughs> I can't eat because it's been so hot. There's no point eating hot, spicy food on a hot day. Now the weather's calming off a bit. I can actually try to get down to eating them. Is it not one of those things that eating a hot thing makes you cooler or something? No, not when it's Korean death noodles. <laughs> if you eat a hot thing on a hot day, it just makes you stink after about two minutes. Okay. So you try and avoid it. Uh, right. We're, we're at uh, quarter to ten. Hmm. Ten? Yes, quarter to ten. So, um, I don't know, is it too early to do anything? Uh, no, no, we can... Uh, we, 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 you, we, you're we, running we, the show tonight. You, you're the man in charge. Well, in that case, it's you're time. The the wheel. 
it's time for something. I don't yes. know what, what should we do. It's time. Nobody get that reference. No, no, I don't get that reference. Backpuss? No, no. I, I, I'm aware of backpuss, but I don't I remember. It was, it. it was like was that... time, and then there'd be lots of pictures of clocks. Think. I'm pretty sure that wasn't backpuss. Then that was the one with those little mouse organs, wasn't it? Yeah, but it might not have been backpuss. I might have been making. I don't know. Backpuss back wouldn't, wouldn't have. Had, it was live. It wouldn't wouldn't have had any flashy. Backpuss wasn't live. It was. It was animated. It was. Stop motion on it. No, it wasn't. It was live. They were real mice and it stuff. Wasn't a real cat, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll, we'll do something. We'll sh we'll sh what should we do? What's in store? That would give people a lot of time to think about it and possibly yeah. figure out my theme. Yeah. Um, I, I'll have to figure out how to do things again. I didn't practice sharing. Ah. Well, <laughs> Phil Lewis points out there were three of the uh, Olympic class ships. There was the Titanic, the Olympic, and the Britannic. Okay. They're all the same, though, are they? Uh, they're all, I think, basically exactly the same. Okay. Uh, right. I I have figured out how to share, so I can Ooh, share ah. my screen. Um, did you want to lock on me? or? I do. Uh, old, old boy says it was Pipkins that had the time thing. Time. And somebody else says it was Finger Bobs. Or Finger Mouse, says LD. We've just started okay. up a thing now. Uh, anyway. Paul, Paul um, Di Tommaso says, I keep getting an error when trying to upload my picture. Is are you? We're talking about the gallery still. Is that where you're having an error? Is there a problem uh, with that at the moment? Make sure it's a GIF, if you can, or a JPEG, and make sure it's less than 5 meg. If you get an error, it usually just means the file's too large. So try and keep it below 5 meg if you can. Okay. Uh, right, I shall start sharing. Mm. And, uh, as, as ever with this, um, I've got to find the window so I can actually move the mouse around on it as well, haven't I? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Now, now, don't forget, we do have a theme tonight. So if you figure out what the theme is, don't say anything in chat. Until uh, when you next see Chris and he says, what is the theme for tonight or something along those lines? Yes. Then it'll be the first person to get the theme correct. will win our sticker. I don't know if anybody will get it tonight. I, I didn't get it. I tried to explain to you. You didn't get it, but then again, that was you. And <clears throat> I am an idiot. So, yeah. But, so if you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in the abilities of our viewers to, to get the theme and know exactly what's happening. Yeah. So that's, we'll, we'll, that's we'll see. Zadster says Hartley hair was so creepy. He was. <laughs> uh, right, on with what's in store. We, yes. we have, first up, I assume, assuming it's visible for you all, the Revel 135th First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. Mm. Uh, it's one of the uh, Star Wars kits. And Everybody I mean, do your TIE Fighter noises now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Revel do get slated for a lot of their kits, but a lot of their sci-fi stuff is actually pretty good. Uh, this is a level two kit, so it's quite a, a simple... Uh, easy kit as it indeed says easy kit so uh it's it's a good one to get into and if you want to you know weather it and do things with it yeah uh, 135th scale so if you assume it's somewhere around 135th scale uh it should be nice and chunky big enough to play with and have a good have a good time painting up i must say though being a being a lover of i don't mind the new films but I can't quite get into the colour scheme of the, the first order of things with like the white panels on the... Just... Yeah, you, you get the impression that they just sort of, we can't be bothered to do anything with it, we just reverse what we did before. Yeah, and I, I don't I have no problem with the new movies or anything like that, but I just can't get to grips with the white panels on the TIE Fighters. But yes, if you if you do the old, um, it's Ravel says it's 135th, so it might be 148th scale or 124th scale. Um, it should be a nice good size to have some fun with that. Yeah. Uh, right, so remembering what that is... Everybody in chat still talking about the Olympic and the Titanic and the Britannic. Okay, well, I'm sure they're paying attention as well. The they're, not just, awesome. they're not ignoring us, are they? You know. Yes. Uh, next up, we have the Italeri uh, 124th uh, DAF 3600 Space Cab. Space Cab. Uh, you might see a, a theme arriving already, but you might not. So, you know, don't, you, you know. Space Cab. Um, this is, so, say, mean... 124th, so it's quite big. Does that mean it's got a bed in the back, basically? Like was I think it means, bed. yes, it's it's a cab with some space in it. Ah. Um, and no sleeping, no trailer. A sleeping space and a pooping space and an eating space. And a... Yeah. Uh, it's based on the reliable 3300 turbo intercooling. Ooh, get you with your turbo intercooler. I nearly it's said something that Cotton would be proud of, but I didn't. <laughs> no, I'll just move on. <laughs> <laughs> It's been characterized by a new aerodynamic shape. It doesn't look terribly aerodynamic to me. It's, it's basically still a big block. Well, that, I don't know but, how old is that vehicle. I mean, it might be a 10 year old a ten year old truck, so it probably was a bit cutting edge 10 or 15 years true. ago. Yeah, I suppose it's slightly slanted at the top, so that's that's mm. how aerodynamic they get. 
Mm. And Liverpool don't forget, don't forget about, Rangers. If, you, if you do figure out the theme tonight, don't say it out in loud in chat yet. Cause we're gonna no, because be I might, might be even quicker. Yeah, because when Chris says, what's the theme, we'll ignore anything typed before that. So Yeah, because we're not. I'm not going to be looking then. Yeah. Yes. And as Joanne Hammer says, RLA, RLE82, you're too early and you may be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Next up, we have the Force 8 F8112 twin filter cartridge pair. Uh, if you've got a uh, filter mask and you need some new filter cartridges for it, put your teeth in, Chris. These may be the ones to use. Yes. Uh, I, I'd, I'd forgotten that e-models actually sell these kind of filters and things like e -models that. E-models so. uses cookies. Yeah, so whenever you need to get equipment like spray booth, they do sell spray booths uh, and all that kind of equipment. Do check them out because they have got a lot of stuff in there. You may not realize they actually stock. Um, it doesn't matter what you paint, and this is where I get grumpy sometimes, I don't care if you're painting poster paints through an airbrush. It doesn't matter what you're painting. Whenever you use any kind of airbrush, Make sure you're using, at the very least, a respirator with filters. Uh, ideally, you want a spray booth, but if you can't get, if you haven't got a spray booth, at least have the windows open and at least use a respirator, not a dust mask, a respirator with proper filters that filter out particulates and vapors and organic vapors and things like that. Yeah, it's got a big list of things down here that it's suitable for protecting your respiratory system from solvent based painting, water based paint, rubbing down paint, paint stripping, white spirit welding, organic dusts, mists, fibers and fiberglass, plaster, wood, hard and soft, and nuisance odors. Yeah, so if, if you do uh, use an airbrush and you do have a mask uh, and you need to pick up some, some cartridges, do get some and get loads because you. A lot of people, me included, will have them and we'll leave them on the on the mask for like two years, and that's the worst thing you can do. You need to change them out every now and then. Yeah, they so. have they have an expiry date, so yes, yes. If you keep your mask filters up to date, yep. and they'll help you with your nuisance odors. Yes, unless if uh, yeah, if you open the packet, if you if you buy if you buy them and then leave them in the packet for like two years and open the packet, don't use yeah. them. Yeah, they they do actually run out. But yes, it doesn't matter what you're spraying. There's people that say, well, I'm only spaying water-based paint, so I don't need a mask. Yes, you do. Unless yeah. you want to If you like your lungs, then protect them. Yes. Yes. It's like, just just, just, just wear a respirator. This is a simple answer. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Next yes. up, we have something more to my sort of scale. Uh, the the Revel 144 Space Shuttle Atlantis. Um, I, I haven't got this particular box but Wait, got... atlantis does that mean the theme is stargate cool uh i don't know if it has to be the atlantis because the the one i got that was on the boosters came with decals for several different shuttle variants you just you missed but, my joke there didn't you about stargate it does have atlantis written up there now i heard i'm just ignoring you because yeah, you know it, it, it would be giving clues to people and i'm not out to do that that would be cheating Sprugloo Addict says, as I always win everything, I won't enter any of the prizes tonight. <laughs> For those that don't know, Sprugloo Addict, who always says, I never win anything on my live stream yesterday, won like a kick ass prize. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, Space uh, so, Shuttle. Yeah, I say 1619, it's, it's dirt cheap. And the, the Space Shuttle is quite a big beastie. So, even at 144, it's still a fair size. Mm. So, they're, they're always fun to do. Tony Blackwell thinks he knows what the theme is. Yeah, a lot of people have said they think they know what the thing is, but I think they might be wrong. Yes. Uh, uh, can I can, can I just can I just say the one thing the theme isn't? Shall I just destroy everybody's thought? No. Yeah. Go on. Go, go on. Then. Tell them what. Tell them what it's not. Okay. Well, the theme is not. Well, no, I'm not going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> the right. theme is not as obvious as you think it is. No, it, it's it's a more sub theme because otherwise it wouldn't fit with everything. Everything fits into the theme. Mm. Uh, this one is the one that Fox built, I think, the 148th Space 1999 Eagle Transporter, special edition. Yep, that's the one I built. It's got the absolutely fan dabby dozy extra decal set. Autographed mini print, personally signed by in every kit. Yep, I've got it on my wall over there, and by wall I mean door. <laughs> signed by Brian Johnson. So, As yeah. in the photograph was signed, and they took a photograph of the signature. <clears throat> really? Oh, that, that gives you the impression that it's signed, he signed every one, doesn't it? Uh, Personally I, I, signed. Let me let me check with my eyes of seeing. Uh, it could be, or it could just be a print of his signature on the on the photograph. I do not know. Oh. <clears throat> well, either way, it's 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 a nice kit. Fox enjoyed yes. building it. Personally, I think it looks like a load of scaffolding, but you know. Yeah, shut up, <laughs> Ethan. <You're> Ethan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you if you're looking at getting yourself the eagle, the difference between this and the normal regular edition is uh, this edition comes with 
uh, a whole mess of extra decals that you can buy separately but this one is just it's just the bee's knees you get the extra bits and bobs in the box as well uh but I, I just love building this it was absolutely great fun to build gave me no problems whatsoever it was a doddle for me to light and i hate lighting and even i lit it i didn't make the lighting rig though so there you go but yes it's, it's, it's sort of the it's, ultimate edition of the kit isn't it yes and it is absolutely fantastic it's got proper sprung feet and everything um yeah i loved it i absolutely loved I it, so. is it 22 inches long i think is that uh, well yeah 22 inches long it's about, you can't see me on screen but yes it's very it's, it's huge if you if you if you're arming an eye and you're local to e models feel free to pop into the e models store and actually have a look at the, the counter because it's my the one i built is on their counter it is in their counter cabinet uh, uh, Matt Bradford says you just bought the cargo pod version as well. Yeah. Yes, there is a cargo pod version available uh, as well. Uh, right, the last thing in what's in store. I know some of you have been looking at little tabs across the top to cheat. But... Oh, just quickly, Joanne Hammer says, <coughs> no problems, I watched the video. I don't remember any... There were probably like some... I had to fiddle around with some bits and bobs. I don't know, uh, there's always bits that... Yeah. I didn't have any major issues with it. It was, uh, it was fun. Right, the, the last thing is the, the trumpeter rivet maker. Now, that's it's, it's sort of misleading, but it, it's sort of... It's the trump bit uh rivet mm. maker that's the important thing not not the rivet maker bit not not the etta bit it's the first bit that's important and that that should give you the, the, overall, the, the overall clue as to the entire everything i'm waving my hands around but the camera's not on but you know no. so so think about everything you've seen and try and get it it's been in the news so you know it's it's up to date and Topical. It's always current. We're always current with the news. So I, I shall close that, and I shall see if I can stop sharing things. Mm. And I have to press a button to stop sharing. Then I'm uh, am I, am yeah, I back in the room. No, you're not sharing now. You're back now. I'm back in the room. Right, I'm back in the room. So there we go. Have your answers, please. Go. Yeah. What is the theme for tonight? What is this week's theme. Uh, Spitty Q8 says, "I'm with Chris." It's a bunch of, bunch of scaffold poles. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, there goes the straightaway. Philly yeah, is in there, I think. Uh, the first one I have seen is uh, Phil East, I think. Yeah. Does Space Force? Yep, it's Trump Space Force, but I didn't need the Trump bit. But yeah, yeah. Well, well done, Phil East. Yeah, and you said it was too difficult. Well, because like, <laughs> I didn't, I did, oh, I didn't get any hints. I just got like the list <laughs> of the things, and I'm like, what? And then he, and then he said, and because he sent me all the bits and bobs. He sent me links to all the products and he says, here's what, can you guess what the theme is? I'm like, space, 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 rivets, space, space. And he said, well, try this instead. And he replaced the rivet thing with the filters. And I'm like, so space, 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 filters for du dust, space, dust. Is it about the Perseids should make meteor shower? He's like, no, what? I don't want. <laughs> <sighs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so that was whoever we said that was. At least that was. Well done. Well done. Uh, send an email to Ted at Ted at emoldles. Yep. You would big sticker. There we go. Yeah, big sticker for that. Big sticker for that. Uh, a couple of people hard enough to <laughs> Fox is upgrading you to a big sticker. Yeah, big, big sticker. <laughs> One that's the right way up as well. Yeah, big sticker anyway for that. Um, we when we're talking about the eagle. Uh, Phil Lewis says I seem to remember some surgery on the back of the cockpit when I built it. There was. But that's only because I wanted to be able to remove the cockpit. It's not a design flaw with the kit. It fits perfectly. It's just I wanted to be able to remove the cockpit cover to get to the lighting. So I took a couple of the tabs off so that it could easily pop on and off. But the beauty of that Eagle kit is uh, if the only issues I had with it were things like I needed an extra pair of hands to build some of the piping because it's, it's not hard. It wasn't complicated. You had to pay attention to the instructions. There's a couple of bits in the instructions where it was a bit ropey, but in terms of the build, it's a fantastic build, and the, the the fit is so good that the one I finished, the one that's at E models now, the entire engine section at the back, and the entire command module at the front, just come off. They're not even glued in place, including the framework, like the command module and the frame at the front. It just pops into place, and the one on the back pops off. Because I was like, I, I need to glue these on, but I need to make sure I don't take off any paint when I'm doing it. And I put them on and was like, oh, it just stays on. So they're really nicely done. They're almost, there's a, quite a lot on that kit that's almost snap fit, but not quite. But yeah, the engine and the command mod, you just pop them on. You don't have to glue them. It's brilliant. And all the, the pods on the side, just slide them in. Don't need to glue. So it's great for transporting it. Nice. Uh, Zadster says, most importantly, 
Well, Specfast get some cool military spec hardware to make models of. I certainly hope so. No, because it'll just go away quietly the moment Trump's not president anymore. Yeah, but no, they just they this week they announced so many billions that were going into it. So mm. it's a thing. It's a real thing. It's going to happen. They, they do know though. We've kind of been doing that for the last 40, 50 years anyway. Yeah, but they're going to do it more now with proper things. They're going to do it with more space. They're, they're, I, I like the logos that they're doing for it, and I, I did yeah, see a logo ages good. ago that was from. Uh, the space Lego that looked pretty cool. I thought they could yeah, use I like the one that looked like No Man's Sky and the one that was like complete, then sort of rip off of the NASA logo. It's really well thought. Yeah, just NASA logo, but in red. Yeah, so and I'm sure that they will because they, they can't use shuttles anymore because they retired the space shuttle, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. they're going to come up with a new type of space shuttle type thing. Tony Blackwell, Tony Blackwell sums it all up in a historical statement. It's bread and circuses. Yes, it is bread and circuses. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know what that means... Oh, well. But yes, it's bread and circuses. It's... Moving on, let's not do politics. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water and not talk about politics. Okay, we'll we'll sit here quietly while you're drinking and then mm. come back later. There we go. Uh, um, Phil Lewis says, Fox, it was your fault that I bought two. If you want, if you have a thing for Space 1999, if you love the Eagle Transporter and you're of that age and you want a beautiful, beautiful display model, because once it's built, it's like this big. It looks fantastic. If you want something that is, of all the e-models builds I've done, well, of all the builds I've done, it's probably the, one of the models that I'm most proud of, and I really didn't want to give it back. Not because I did a good job on it, but because it just looks fantastic. So if you like your Space 1999, if you think it's a, if it's a classic vehicle that really floats your boat, just go for the... I mean, if you can, if you can afford the, the limited edition kit, do get that one because it's got the full cartograph decal set and everything else, um, and it just gives you a lot more options. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's a beautiful kit. It's a it beautiful is one of the design. nicest piles of scaffolding that I've seen for a long yeah, time. It's, so, yeah, and I've I've seen a lot of builders <laughs> next door when they had DIY being done. It was like you know, but yeah, Fox by an eagle. No, I'd, the thing is, I don't want to make another one. I've made one now. I don't want to make another one. So if e-models have a break-in and only one thing goes missing. Yeah, that would be a bit obvious. <laughs> Although I could take Ted's tank as well and that would confuse him. That would, though. Although I'm just Ted. Yeah. I got the internet, so... Yeah. Uh, Phil Lewis says he's got the transporter and freighter. Yes. Well, they the same thing, they just had different middle wits. Um, the Orc Boy says, Fox, did you say you can get the extra decal separate? Yes, you can uh, get the decal set separately. I've got it on my back. Uh, yes, you can get it separately. I don't know if you models have it in stock. You can also buy the uh, metal thruster bell set, but it's like 150 quid. So, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, if you do use the metal thruster set, though, important fact, if you do use the metal engine bell set, put a lot of weight in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, because they're turned aluminium. So, yes. Yeah, aluminium is not terribly heavy, but it's heavier than plastic. Uh, Phil Lewis says, uh, yes, yes, they do. Uh, does he mean they do stock? Have they got the decal set in? They might well have the decal set. I shall have a look. I shall have uh, a look. Joanna Hammond says, a question for quiz sent physics today. So yes, I have a question. If, I have, uh, if I have we end up taking apps. one of those questions for, for the giveaways, make sure you're ready with physics answers. Yes, we have some shout outs and we have a question. Don't forget, of course, we've got one, but we'll do me some sticker giveaways later on. So if you have a question and an answer, if you send us the question and the answer that goes with it, uh, and we use that question, we'll send you a sticker. But if you do send us that, make sure to include your name and address so we don't have to then mail you and say, thanks for the question, what's your name and address, so we can send you a sticker. Yeah, especially because e emails names aren't always the same as real names, and postmen <laughs> get crossed. And obviously they pay near relation, no relation to the names that you use in the chat either, so it's always nice to know who you are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you want to do a couple of shout-outs? We've got some shout-outs. Uh, you can do. Phil Lewis says, sorry, I mean, the difference was the pod in the middle. So, yeah, the, the ship itself is basically the same, and it? it's just got different bits in the middle of it. Yes, it's the, it's, 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 that's the whole point of the Eagle was. It was an interchangeable you've got the passenger, but the reconnaissance module, which is the one I made, uh, or the freight module, which is the bed with the radioactive barrels and stuff on it and things. With things. I, I had a die-cast toy of it when I was little, and it had a little winch thing that had a magnet. Yeah, they go down oh, and picks up a cargo. That, that, that was the freight thing. That was the nuclear waste one. You can you can get that as a separate. They do that one as well. Uh, somebody did mention the Eagle Hawk, though the Space Nineteen Ninety Nine Hawk. I'd I'd love it if they did a Hawk at that scale because I don't awesome. remember that. Is that different? That, it was the one you saw for like a few seconds in one episode. It was like the combat version. Okay. With an orange pod on the front and a gun, and it, you didn't see a lot of it. 
They um, weren't about combat, were they? They were about peaceful exploration and stuff. Yeah, but they had a military version. You have to watch the episode. The episode was that they had started attacking Alf the eagles, <laughs> uh, but it was really weird because they were nowhere near Earth. And it turned out it was probably some, I can't remember what it was, but it was, I think it was some energy being or some planet controlling them and they weren't really there. And it, but yes. Okay. Uh, yes, you say we had some shout outs. What, what are we uh, shouting out? We have some shout outs. We have a couple from Jamie Bone. Uh, remember, if you want us to do a shout out, if it's somebody's birthday or they're getting married or you've got a model show coming up or anything like that, anything you want us to announce on the telly, uh, then just drop us an email, ted at emodels.co.uk with the details. Somebody did send one to Ted about a week ago about an ipms show coming up it got deleted before we had a chance to read it out so if you if that was you send it again it wasn't personal no uh <laughs> okay uh, jamie bone says hi ted i uh, hope you'll get well soon i have two shout outs today and the first is for my uncle whose birthday it was yesterday so that was sunday so we're gonna have to sing happy birthday aren't we uh, uncle hang on let me just check let me just check is the other one we've got a uh Oh, there we go. Just checking the other email we've got isn't a shout out for a birthday because we can kill two birds with one stone. Oh, yeah, yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. We wouldn't want to put people through it twice. So, sorry, who is, who is it? What? Uh, so this is for Jamie Bones' uncle. Jamie it's Bones' uncle. Is so that going to fit? I'll let you count in. I was just going to say, is that going to fit Jamie Bones' uncle? Yeah, that'll fit. Yeah, we can make it fit. <laughs> Comedy, you have to make it fit. Okay. Uh, we haven't got, uh, we've got Mike's, Mike's in chat as mod. He can, he can join in. Yeah, so, yeah. Joining, Mike. you can, you can type really quick and we'll, we'll wait for you at the end okay. right so um okay we'll we'll start with happy birthday to jamie bones dad uh, uh, uncle. uncle uncle not dad uncle yes. you just trying to delay it now by just dragging it out it, it, i mean you might forget <laughs> oh, it's, it's ted that forgets things right sorry <sighs> ah, right okay one two oh one two three four happy, happy birthday, birthday to you happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, dear Jamie Bones' uncle. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Yesterday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Uh, Mikey's uh, typing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You can't copy and paste the next bit. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, well, you're singing it wrong. That's not how you sing it, is it? Uh, uh, he also says he's got yeah. a second shout out. Uh, he says also it's his mum's niece. I'll rephrase that. He says, also, my mum's niece is getting married on Saturday. Ooh, congratulations to your mum's niece. Getting yeah, married indeed. on Saturday. Uh, there isn't a wedding song, so we can't sing no, that. We can't really, there's nothing we can sing for that. Um, let's have a look at the next one. We have a shout-out from James Chapman, uh, who says, uh, it's a shout-out for um, a model show. He says it's the St. Ives at Cambridgeshire IPMS model show is the 30th of September, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's a bit far off. Well, it's not that far off, I suppose, mm -hmm. is it? Um, so it's the, the St. Ives Cambridgeshire IPMS model show. It's the 30th of September, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., but he doesn't say where or anything. So It's in St. Ives, I would expect. Yeah, he doesn't say, like, in such and such a place. So if you're, if you're in the Cambridgeshire area uh, on the 30th of September, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Go along to the IPMS show. Uh, IPMS International Plastic Model Society is that? It's the big show. Like, plastic, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It's the big, the big one that ends up in Telford at the end of the year. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got shows everywhere. They're they're international. It says it in the title. Yeah, it's the I. That's what the I means. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Dad's fallen asleep. I think typing "Happy Birthday to You" a lot. That's so, as it, and, that's and right. says "Happy Birthday to You" is still in copyright, isn't it? Uh, no. No, I think it is. No, that's why that, that's the big thing a few years ago. It was sudden everybody realised the copyright had lapsed, so everybody can sing it now. And, and even if it wasn't, it's still a, a, a acapella I just, version. I just went to reach over to my monitor to scroll the chat because <laughs> <laughs> I'm using my iPad over there. That God, brings up sport, everybody. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Ian Bottom agrees. No, not out. No, out of copyright recently. Yes. Uh, Thermonuclear Bogginton is panicking because there's pineapple on his pizza. Yeah, I, I love pineapple. Panic. That's so, horrible. Get rid of that. Well, if you order Hawaiian pizza, that's why you get. That's what you're, you can't. Right, Joanna it. says it needs to be uh, that pizza needs to be attacked with a sledgehammer, dropped in hydrochloric hydrofluoric acid, and then thrown into the sun. That's a bit of over overkill. You could just take the pineapple off and then eat the rest of it. No, there's nothing wrong with pineapple on a pizza. It's fine. I like pineapple on a pizza. I only like, don't like a pizza if it hasn't got anchovies on it. Yeah, you can take them off as well. Mike, uh, Dad says Sally James. Yeah, he's woken up then. Yeah, he's woken up now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, we had uh, we got the shout out. No, that's it for the shout out. So thank you to you guys for your shout outs. Uh, Michael Jackman's giving pizza a rest for a while. Oh, he's, what, he's, what's your takeaway of choice this week then? Yeah, what you haven't delivered. Chinese, you haven't or... delivered during the show. Otherwise, people will just be turning up at your door and demanding that I don't know how that's going to go. I'm just stopping that one now. Demanding you eat something. I started a joke without realizing the structure, and it just didn't. Work. Or the punchline. Yeah, or the. Or it being a joke. Yes, it. I didn't plan it at all. I regret my decision immediately. <laughs> uh, Jeff Longman says, no, no, no. Once the fruit is on the pizza, it's contaminated. No, pizza's... It's, what do you think tomato is? It's not a fruit. It's a vegetable. Not a vegetable. It's a fruit. It's a vine, really. But it's a fruit. It's more of a fruit than a vegetable. What do you think uh, olives are? You can keep them as well, see? There olives you go. Are technically fruit. I, I stand by my decision. Peppers and chilies are technically fruit. No, just put it's... meat on it and you'll be sorted. So, you know... What do you think peppers and chilies and everything else are? Yeah, Joanna says you may as well just put an orange or a lemon on your pizza. Yeah, that's just silly. <laughs> yeah, Phil Lewis says olives are fruit. Uh, James Chapman says the St. Ives model show is pretty good. You get a free Airfix kit too. No, that's right. Uh, the um, the Telford one, I got a free Airfix magazine. Nah. But uh, not, a, not a kit. The Telford one, I got a free parking space. Yep. Actually, last time I went to the Telford show... I got the last parking space <laughs> because I, I pulled in at just about nine o'clock. I got I, I, the guy pointed me to a parking space. I couldn't see any others. I got out of my car. And as I got out of my car, like right next to the gate, the guy was turning someone away saying we're full now. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, the Telford one is November, isn't it? Sort of yes. Early November. Yeah. Something like that. November. Yeah. Something I, like I'm that. intending to go along to that again uh, on the Sunday. I think it's a two-day thing, isn't it, still? Yeah, I'm hoping to go so, along. I'll be, it, it depend on a few things. Um, I haven't booked a hotel, so I'll just go on the Sunday. Um, but it'll be a case of turn up and just try and get in at 10 o'clock. I haven't, I haven't bought tickets or anything, so... Yeah, but, uh, we've, we've, got, we've got a while until we need to worry about it, haven't we? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and go. I, might not, I wasn't able to go last year, so we'll, we'll see anyway. Uh, right, we have some... We have some questions for giveaways, but I don't know if you want to do giveaways or do the what's in, we've done what's in store. We've done what's in we're not gonna do that again. No, we don't do that again. <laughs> no. Wow. I haven't yet had a mail from whoever it was that won the uh, sticker for the, the theme from Phil East. You haven't mailed me yet, Phil East. Oh well, he's busy Head. watching. Give him a chance, it's fine. Okay. Don't forget. Uh, why is it that people are with a uh, Tony Blackwell says, Why is it that people with a nut allergy are allergic to peanuts when peanuts aren't nuts? Uh -huh. well, what what are they? I thought they. That's one of these things that is it. Something's a berry when it's got seeds on the outside of it or something. I don't know. Does a peanut grow under the ground? Is it on a, is it on a vine? I don't know. You blow my mind now. <laughs> there, there was something about. I, I think berries. I think you have a nut allergy and you have a separate peanut allergy probably. Because blackberries aren't berries, but strawberries are. Because they've got their seeds on the outside of the the berry uh, itself. I don't know. But I, I'm probably wrong. But someone will tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I'll ignore it. But what is a tomato? Fruit? Is it a vine? Uh, Tony has his finger on the pulse, apparently. Uh, or is that about the, the peanuts? Yeah. Peanuts are leg legumes. Is that the word? Yeah, legumes. Like peas, hence like the peas. name. But there's also oh. nut in the name as well. Peanuts are not nuts. They grow underground. So they're pea nuts, but they're not, so they're just... Just peas. Wouldn't you be able to call them nut peas, then? Would it be more accurate? Not peas. Nut peas. Yeah. Some of them are probably a bit crazy, says Felice. Way. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yes, um, anything else happening in chat? You got any questions for us? We haven't. We don't tend to get very many questions as such now. We used to get quite a lot of questions. Yes. I, I think, think everybody knows everything now, because we've already answered all the questions. Yeah, I think I think most people in the chat now know all the things that they need to normally ask anyway. All the things. York Boys says, why doesn't baby oil contain babies? Yeah, uh, there's probably a legal that, reason. That's what does confuse me. I was I was in a pet shop the other week and we I were looking we'll carry on. looking at, at packages of stuff. And it got me thinking about normal food stuff as well, because you can go into a pet shop and you can buy hamster nuggets. And they're nuggets for hamsters, but they're not made out of hamsters. But chicken nuggets are not for chickens. And not most food stuff has got on the packet what the food is. 
but some of it has got what the food's for. So you might buy dog food, it's got a picture of a dog on it. But it might be rabbit dog food, but it won't have a picture of a rabbit on it and have a picture of a dog on it. Hamster what's balls. That? What's with that then? Hamster balls. Hamster balls. Well, they're balls for hamsters to go into. <laughs> <laughs> but my, um, my, my brother was telling me, he's saying about you don't realise how strange the English language is and how our, how we name things weirdly until you speak to someone who's not native English speaker. And they said, okay, you've got a plug socket on the wall. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. Well, which is it? Is it the plug or the socket? Because you've got a plug and you've got a socket. So why is that a plug socket? But that not a socket plug? It's, yeah. Yeah, why do you call it a plug socket? Because it's a, it's a socket for one thing only and you don't call that a socket plug or a plug... It's, very strange. <laughs> oh, TK's in. Hey, TK. Evening, TK. What's what's he on about? Is that me? I don't know. Uh, Favourite chocolate bar from the 70s, says Shadowland Scale Models. <sighs> United Biscuits. It's got to be United Biscuits. Uh, yeah, sort of, maybe. Yeah. When I was on my way up north over the weekend, we stopped at Birmingham and we went into Cadbury That's World. Up north. It's up north from here. Well, we got to the north at that point. You're still in the yeah, middle. We, we're on our way up north. We stopped in Birmingham. We're in Cadbury World. Oh, yeah. And and they just got lots of chocolate. My, so we ended up spending about 40 quid on chocolate. My my sister but, my sister in law actually went to for an interview there. She worked there for a little bit. And she went for an interview there and they said, um, said right, um, staff policy, you can eat as much chocolate off the conveyor belt as you want. If you, if you just take it, we don't care. If you if you're there and you stood at the and just take whatever you want, eat whatever you, just, as much as you want, whenever you want. You don't, we don't care. Just do it. But you've got to eat it there. You can't put it in your bag and take it home. Uh, well, yeah, no, no. There was just because and she was like, that's a bit weird. So she got onto the production line and she said to someone, why why do they let you take whatever you want? And they said, because you do it once. You don't do it a second time because once you spend all day eating chocolate, yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't do it a second time. <sighs> uh, Zesta says it's a mains power socket. Yeah, well, it's, I, I know, but it's, it's one of those little idiosyncrasies of the English language. It's when you call it a plug socket. What is it a plug? Or is well, it it's descriptive as to socket what plug. It's just it's just the idiosyncrasy of name it of the name of it. It's a plug socket. Well, of course it's a plug socket. It's a socket, but it's like it's like you don't call um, you don't call the keyboard on your laptop a laptop keyboard. You just call it a keyboard. Um, you, might. you don't you don't call yeah. what's on you don't call what's on the corner of your cars a car wheel. Well, if you're in the wheel business, you probably do. Because <laughs> if you put a bike wheel on it by mistake, then you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Joanna, Joanna says, how, how do you do modeling with just one working hand? Seriously, my hand is currently operating intermittently. Because Joanna had some arm um, surgery things. So uh, I don't know. I think you don't. You rest it and wait till it gets better. Yeah, or just work on something that's really big that you can brush paint. So you can just sit there like that and not have to worry about holding it in the other hand. Yep. Or, or learn to really big Warhammer kit. <laughs> Actually, if your Titanic's there and you've got the hole built, just... Brush paint the entire Titanic is probably not a good idea. Yeah, it's a little while. Keep you busy. It's fine. Uh, Paul Miller asks, how's Ted now? I hope he's feeling better. Uh, he's actually in chat, so he can tell you. But to save him typing a big response <laughs> out, uh, I'll save him the typing. Um, update on Ted. Ted update. Uh, Ted is feeling much better. He's up and about. He's back. To, he's almost back to normal. Uh, he says he's uh, he stopped dropping things now. He's, 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 his hand's back to pretty much normal. Uh, but he still finds his attention span is a bit reduced at the moment. But he was on public transport today. He was on public transport on the bus. I think he was on a bus. I'm not sure. But he made it back home. He said there were people licking the windows. So uh, TK says, hold on, Fox, you've had a shave. I only just had a trim, but I'll let you off the hook. Uh, I've Well, I need a shave there. It, it was, it was, yeah. But TK's not been around for a little while. So No, I've just taken the Babylonian thing. Because I don't like cutting babies in half. I've taken the Babylonian beard and just cut it down to it. It was pointy, but then I kind of I thought it looks brilliant and pointy, and then I went, I'd have gone too far. <laughs> and then I had to do some topiary. So I'm trying to grow it back to being pointy. I want to look like James Robertson Justice, so I can pretend I work in hospital or something. <sighs> uh, Shadowland scale model says noodles or fried rice. Noodles. 
Either. It depends Noodles. on your mood, really. Noodles. Do either. <laughs> Am I showing a bias there by any chance? <laughs> Noodles. Sergeant Bone says both. Uh, Joanna Hammond says, Skipper Ted, you didn't have a stroke. Did you symptoms sound like it? Yes, he did. Uh, Bob Symes Beard says, Tony Blackwell. Yes. Uh, Sergeant Bone says, fried rice noodles. noodles. Yeah. Bob Symes look. <sighs> right, should we... Um, should we, we give um, something away? Yeah, yeah well, should, we, should we find out who... Gave, uh, wow, hang on. Chips. Mm -hmm. That says neither chips. It depends what you have. If you want to fried rice, you can have fried rice and chips. You can't really have noodles and chips. You can't have rice. And and none of this dried noodles nonsense that you get in Chinese food sometimes, where it's like little thin. I want proper fat udon noodles. My local uh, takeaway actually did udon noodles uh, in some of their soups once, and they actually did an udon noodle dish. And very occasionally, you'd get this big thing of udon noodles with like the whatever the. The uh, you know the beef and stuff. Very occasionally, you discover that this whole portion of udon noodles was just one single giant noodle. It was brilliant! You'd be like, "Wow, this is like thirty feet long." Is that not? I'm oh, not like a pasta sheet. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a giant udon noodle. It's like a pool noodle, but edible. It's brilliant. Uh, Sprugu addict says spaghetti bolognese or lasagna. Oh, spaghetti bolognese. I don't know because you can have chips with lasagna, but spaghetti bolognese is really nice. Uh, TK says bacon. Yeah, bacon is always the answer. Yeah, you can make a lot more spaghetti bolognese in a pan that big. Whereas lasagna is limited to the size of your oven. This is true, yeah. But if you've got a, if you've got like four four th things on your hob, if you get a pan that covers all four, that's that's doable. That's legal. You can use all four, yeah. So you could make many, many litres of spaghetti bolognese, but you're all limited by the size of your oven for, for lasagna. Uh, Ted didn't take your advice and not put a long answer in chat. He put an answer in chat. He says, as Fox says, I'm slowly recovering, everyone, but slower than I thought, although the doctor did say it would take some time. Yes. I was I was kind of hoping you would. I was kind of doing that so you wouldn't need to type all that, Ted, but don't worry. <laughs> we're, dead pro we're dead protective of Ted at the minute. Yeah, we're probably over too overprotective, but no. Yeah, Ted was like, well, I might start doing some filming next week. I'm like, no. <laughs> I said, you can, you can start doing filming again. Doing fil <laughs> Say again? Don't make me come around and take your camera away. <laughs> I was like, you can start doing filming when you can do it without getting that look from Mrs. Ted. That's when you can start filming again. Uh, Ray's, Ray's going. Good night, my friends, he says. Good night, Ray. Oh, thanks for coming Good in, Ray. Night. Uh, what were we doing? You were going to do something. Um, yes, should we do uh, whoever won last week's giveaway thing? I need to do a. a uh, we announced the winner of last week's. What What was it last week? It was a thingy. I'll show you. Shall I screen share and show you? Thing. Thing. I Go can ahead. Press some buttons and show you. Don't forget to lock on you. Okay, locking on me, sir. Locking now, sir. Screen sharing. Right, so you should be seeing last week's jolly jolly prize, which was the Trumpeter 135th JGSDF, the Japanese something General Self Defense Force. Type seven five one five five millimeter. We think that's a bit of a mistype because it's not. Well, I think we think it's type seventy five. Yeah, one fifty five millimeter. millimeters. Yeah. Self propelled howitzer. Uh, rather, rather funky one thirty fifth uh, trumpeted kit. And you all went a bit Bruh! when we announced this last week because you all seem to quite like this as a prize. There's eight trillion tiny tiny parts because trumpeter, obviously. Uh, it does say it's got over 770 parts, which means this is pretty good for a 35 quid kit. 36 yeah. quid kit. So that was last week's prize. Uh, and what did we ask you to do? We asked you last week to put a comment on last week's video. Look at that. It's like Inception. You're watching YouTube with a screen showing YouTube and a screen showing the. Wow, I broke YouTube's my YouTube's watching you. I know. Watching me, watching you. To me, to you. Uh, yes, we asked you to put a comment on with a tank fact. Didn't have oh, yeah, to tank fact, yeah. It was just a random tank fact. And we know it was a good a good prize last week because 39 of you commented. Um, and the only, the only time we had more comments was that when we were giving away the, the uh, giant tooth. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, so we just asked you to do a tank fact. And we had lots of interesting tank facts. Do you want me to read some tank facts out? Well, well should we do the winner first and then we'll read some facts out after that? Oh, okay, it's nice to find out who won it first, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so let's. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to take the URL from last week's video, paste it into the random comment picker, uh, which is the comment picker that picks random comments from YouTube randomly. Oh, the, the, the comment picker that picks them randomly, yeah, randomly from YouTube. Yeah, cool. 
So it does a YouTube comment, but it does randomly, and then it's amazing. Uh, and we're going to load the comments in. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ding! So we had 45 comments. That's 45 unique comments, basically. Uh, and the winner is, are we ready? Should we do a little drum roll, if you wouldn't mind, Chris? If you'd? Okay, ready? Yep. <laughs> Randomly pick. RLE82 says, thanks for letting me enter the comp. Yay. So RLE82, congratulations. You have won yourself. Like they've been in the chat as well. Yeah, they rather delicious. Uh, 135th JGSDF type 75, 155 millimeter. Yay. <laughs> Which is a lot to say in one line. Um, Felice so, well, says, you... damn, I think I forgot to enter again. No. Oh, well, you know, soz guys, you know I'll win, says Sprugly Waddict. Not this time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so well done. Congratulations, uh, RLE82. Make sure you send an email to ted at emodels.co.uk. That's ted at emodels.co.uk. We'll need your name, uh, your address, and if you can include your phone number, just in case we need it for the delivery guy. Uh, name, address, and phone number, and just put down that you won uh, hashtag 05577. Indeed. Um, now, the reason we ask you to do that is because we'll get the mail and we'll forward it on to the guys at eModels to send that out to you. They won't have a clue what you've won, so and we'll, we need to know. So we will make sure that that gets on to them and they'll get it off to you. So just send us an email with your name, address, phone number, and what you've won. So the 05577, the 135th Howitzer. And well done. Spruger Addict says, I never win anything. <laughs> He's back. He's bad. Uh, we're going to read some comments. What, what, uh, what, yes, what, what, so we had some tank facts. Tank facts. I'm, I'm sure they're all true tank facts as well. Yeah, what was it last week? Was it cat? Was it cat facts last week? It was cat facts the week before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, tanks are great for holding water. Says Tint Two Thousand. True. Uh, Dimitrios Charles says tank facts. Since 1945, all British tanks have been equipped with boiling vessels, allowing them to make tea and cook food. United States and other armies worldwide now have similar devices in their tanks. That sounds true. Yeah. Uh, Aculius, who I can never pronounce correctly, he did tell me how to pronounce his name once, and I just instantly forgot, uh, says, every Shark Tank contestant, US TV show like Dragon's Den, is required to meet with an on-set psychologist after filming their segment. They have to make sure we haven't scarred them for life, says Mark Cuban. Different kind of tanks, true, but it works. Yeah. I'll cover that. Yeah. Uh, Smooth Workshop says, in Mother Russia, tank have big boom-boom stick. That was my Russian. Uh, that was... I'll shut up. Yeah, don't do Russian again. Uh, Red Lerno 8 says, two goldfish in a tank, one turns to the other and says, do you know how to drive this thing? Uh, Equal Pete is under there. Tank crew for the Russian JS-3. Had to be under five foot eight. Yeah. Uh, Robert Wise says, snap, crackle, pop, and away we go. Nothing stops 63-ton tank on the move. I wouldn't think much would, no. Uh, Alex BB says, first tank kit I built was the Dinky Military Kit 1037, the Chieftain Tank. These were die-cast metal pre-painted kits. It was bought as a gift from my gran in the early 70s. I was around 9 or 10. Uh, unfortunately, I only had it for less than one afternoon as due to the fact it fired little bullets, which as soon as it was built, I started firing at my little brother. My gran took it back off me and put it back in the box and then disappeared, never to be seen again. <laughs> uh, one last one, Achilles again says uh in world war ii for every german tank actually in combat there were three tanks that were in the workshop or broken down on the way to battle or simply unavailable general bulk who led the sixth panzer army at the end of world war ii against the russians in budapest said we were called the sixth panzer army because we have six tanks <laughs> there you go so i shall unshare so well done uh, to RLE, uh, I've forgotten who won it now, or instantly. Yeah, or, or something. Uh, RLE82, my apologies. Uh, yes, well done. You have won the thing, so make sure to send that email to ted.emodels. Am I still screen sharing? I'm still screen sharing. You are. There we go. Uh, ted.emodels.co.uk. Name, address, phone number, and what you won. And if anybody wins anything tonight, stickers and stuff, do make sure to send us an email saying what you won, because then we use the email as the list of things to send out. So there you go. Yeah, so um, there we go. So that's the winner. Uh, did, for this did one. we have some questions for stickers and mugs? We do have a couple how, of how many have we got? We have two from Joanna Hammond. Uh, so we can do two at least, and we can make a question up. Um, okay. So or, or while we're doing those, someone send us a question quick. Send us a question and answer to ted at emodels.co.uk. Yep. Something that we can use. It doesn't have to be model related. They're probably not from Joanna, if I <laughs> it have, can be have about a guess. It can be about anything at all. Um, but Try and get the answer right and send it to us so we 
you know, can ask people. Yeah, we'll, we'll assume the answer's correct. Do include your name and address, though, so we don't have to mail you back and say, hey, can we have your name and address and you a sticker? So make sure to include your name and address. If you don't want a sticker for doing that, then, then that's also fine. You don't have to have one. We're not yeah. going to force feed your stickers. Or, or... Yeah, you might not want uh, 35 different yeah. stickers or the same stickers 35 times. <laughs> the same stickers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, shall we do some giveaways then? What have we got? Uh, we have a mug, we have a little sticker, we have big stickers. We do one of each. One of each sounds good, yeah. Why not? What should we start with? Uh, do have you got the question? Yeah. Have you got a question that's more suited to a mug or a sticker? Or they've been singing songs in chat about mice on stairs. I'm not entirely uh, certain why it started, well, but I have to say now that Joanna Hammond sent us a question that I don't actually know how to read the answer out. <laughs> oh, hang on. Uh, okay, I do, but we'll give it a go. We'll, we'll... What's the worst that can happen? I've got it. Actually, she explains how to read it out. I've just realised. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> symbol. Um, okay, okay. Well, there we go then. We've got a question from John Hammond. It's a sort of fits more of a cosmology question, and we'll do this one for. Okay, there's going to be some googling for everybody here. Uh, we have. We'll do it for. We'll do it for a. We'll do it for. A, we'll do it for a mug. <laughs> Starting with a mug. Start with mug. Big. We'll do these two first because we've got a third question just come in. Uh, okay. LD said I sent one to your email, Fox. Uh, who did what? LD said uh, I sent one to your email, Fox. Have you? Oh, that's on a different, that's a different email. It means you've got open. Oh, I've got to go now. <laughs> oh, that's on a different. Uh, oh, I've got. To, oh, wait. Uh, shaking my fist. Uh, uh, George has sent one to Ted, apparently. So. Michael Jackman says, good, I can take okay, a break. Yes, okay, right, we have we have three, we have four questions. Okay, we've got, got four questions, so we'll keep one. Multiple questions. questions. Yeah, you good. Okay, we'll, we'll use that one for the little sticker. So for a mug, these are thinking questions now. You know what Joanna's questions are like, they're thinking questions. The, the new style mug with the, the proper logo across the bottom and everything, yep. yeah. Mr. E on it. As, as, yep. Now as, as always, yeah. now as always, if you've already got a mug, you are more than welcome to have another mug you may have an old mug and you want the new one or you've got a new one and you want another one you're more than welcome just join in if you don't have a mug uh, wait i'll rephrase that if you already have before a mug, you do that actually, tony tony blackwell does indeed say don't forget to refresh so before t before fox kills some time by you know talking about not having mugs and stuff don't forget to refresh and make sure you're watching us live if you didn't just hear me say that then then you're not live you're, you're watching for a few minutes ago so you should be now i should say that and you should see it now and hear Wait, me now. How do they know you didn't just say it when you just, just it? did it now? It, it's 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 ten thirty two and a half. Cashier number four, please. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> click, drag, drag the little bar all the way to the right, refresh it, click the little live button, everything you can do to make sure you're watching live and not, you know, a few minutes back. Because after we've been on for an hour and a half, things buffer up and you're not always watching live you so we do always pick the answer that we see first if you're answering 10 minutes late then you're not going to be first yeah and don't forget of course we see the chat differently to you guys when you when you post in chat you see it immediately that's not how it actually works it, we see the first one that youtube receives so we see it in the order youtube actually gets it because when you please see it on your screen get upset. <laughs> please don't get upset if you yeah. think you're first but we think somebody else is first because it's what yeah. we see that's when you yeah. see it on your screen, it's still going to YouTube. It's not got that yet. So there you go. Anyway, let's do it for a mug. So a couple of questions for jo Joanna. So it needs Googling. Uh, Jeff Longman says, hurry up. I need to pee. I will now talk much slower. Now, uh, go on. Right. So question one for a mug. This will require Googling. We assume this is correct. What is, what is the evaporation time of the smallest black hole? Go. Ah. What is the evaporation time of the smallest black hole? Is Joanna this the one you didn't know how to read the answer? Uh, Joanna actually says she doesn't need a, uh, a sticker. Um, Forty-two and a half miles. We have a, we have an extra question if if this all goes horribly wrong. Do, 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 do. Uh, I, I must admit, I don't know the answer myself. There will so... be some Googling required. I will give a clue and say it is a number to a power. There we okay. Go. Cheesecake and onion cakes. <laughs> Let's preview it. Sally James says Sergeant Bone. 
Felice says Debbie McGee. That's probably not right. Mike Pabs does some maths, but it's not the right maths. Uh, Mike says 69 minutes, but he's also not, not a valid for answering anymore. Now being a mod, you know, George Walter says Google failed. <laughs> I think you may have broken them. Oh, uh, he says two parsnips. Yeah, I think you may have broken them, Joanna. 12 parsecs is distance, but never mind. Michael Jackman says definitely don't know, which technically is the correct answer, but it's it's not correct enough. 42 E001 Flibbity Gibbet says Jeff Longman. I don't think anyone's going to get this. Phil Lewis says, are we talking micro black holes? Ziggurok says it would take a whopping 10 to the 67th power years for a black hole the mass of the sun to evaporate and around 10 to 100 power, 10 to the 100th powers, 10, 10 to 100 years for the largest black hole in the universe. Uh, you know, I think we should. Uh... Yeah, I think we might. I think we might abandon this one because nobody's going to get it. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, we'll 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 abandon this one. Uh, Stephen Hilary says time is proportional to the mass cubed. Uh, Joanna Hammond says a clue. The answer it is seconds. Tamir Rubber Black says TK. Next week, Adam Clark says an answer in seconds, and there is a power involved. Okay, uh, we we could leave that running and do a sticker. That's going to get weird though because yeah, we're gonna miss, weird, we'll miss, we'll miss the answer, won't we? <laughs> Yeah, we, so, might, um, we might abandon that one because it's. Uh, I think we've broken yeah. the entire chat. Okay, fair enough. Well, the answer was... Uh, Everyone answer doesn't was, know. Uh, the answer was given as 10 to the minus 44 seconds. So there you go. So 10 to the minus 44 seconds was the answer. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so not to worry. We've got more questions. <laughs> uh, we'll try a different one then. This... <laughs> This may go the same <laughs> way. Sprugloo was the closest. <laughs> yeah. This may go the same way. I think. I think Joanna, you may need to get a little less sciency, a little less in depth for them going forward. But yeah. okay, we'll try again for the mug. Hey, can we have another question? Like, what color is blue? Or... Yeah. Well, we'll we'll go with the questions we've got. <laughs> this may want. This one go may go the same way. Uh, it is ready. What is the dipole moment of acetone? It's a number. And what is the dipole moment of acetone? Go. Okay. Uh, Jeff just Longman says, says I need to put... Not anymore. Yeah, I think you may have uh, you may have overreached them with these questions, Joanne, I think. What is the dipole moment of acetone? Uh, Lord Barkley says, we need easy T-shirt colour. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mountain says, what? Uh Oh, there we go. Uh, George Flauter says... Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. My apologies. I don't know the answer. I so there was the right answer there, but there isn't. Right. Shadowland Scale Model says, alternative question, how do you spell ABBA backwards? Uh, there we have the correct answer. Stephen Hill Harris says 2.91D. That is the correct answer. Okay. Apparently, I don't know what that means, but Stephen Hill Harris, you've got the answer right at 2.91D. I'm going to assume that he knew it. He didn't use Google at all. Hey, he, may have, he may have used it. A few people give almost the right answer, but they all gave the same almost the right answer. So I don't know how that works. But yes, uh, 2.91D. So Stephen Hill Harris, well done. Send an email to ted at emodels.co.uk and say that you want the mug. And we'll forward that on to the guys and they'll get that mug sent out to you. If you want a mug, by the way, you can buy these. Uh, from the eModels website. Uh, they don't sell them at profit. They sell them completely at cost. So what it costs them to get these made and buy, they sell it to you for exactly the same. They don't make a profit on them. So if you want a mug, go and grab yourself one. They are available. <sighs> right, so that's that one. Uh, we have two more questions. Luckily, we've got two more. <laughs> uh, right, so the next one. <sighs> and this well, which is, size uh, sticker are we going to use first? Uh, we'll, do the, we'll, do the, we'll do a big one. A big sticker. Now remember, they're not actually this big. This is paper. It's it's that bit. It's the Mr. E. That's yeah. your sticker. It's a vinyl sticker like like you put on your car. So you put it down, you peel the backing off, and you rub it in. So no, you peel the backing off before you put it down. Otherwise, yeah, it no, yeah. You, you take it off, take it off the thing, put it down, and there's an extra layer peel. peel the fronting off. Um. Yeah. So it's a proper vinyl one. So, um, ba -da -ba -do. uh, Stephen Hilaris says, I binged it. I don't need another one, so please give it to someone else. Okay, we can do that, uh, but nobody else gave the right answer. 
<laughs> if you don't want another mug, don't answer the question because then it just makes it confusing. Yeah, uh, we, we don't need confusions. No, in that case, I will go for. Should we go for the nearest answer that we got? What was the I answer? I don't know what these are, so I don't. Uh, well, the the answer was two point nine one D, but we got a few people that gave it almost that answer. So in that case, I've got to find them now. Uh, was it George uh, Flauter that said 2.69D? Yeah, a few people said 2.69D, but George was the first. So First to say with the D, yeah. Yep, yeah, so we'll say George wins that then. So there you go, George. That's yours in that case. Um, so send an email, ted at emodels.co.uk. Say you've won a mug, and we'll get that forwarded on to the guys at emodels. So thank you for Stephen for saying somebody else can have it. Uh, but do remember, if you don't want one, don't answer the question because then it, it avoids any confusions. Uh, but well done. Uh, right, so where are we up to? Oh, yes, doing a big, big sticker. sticker. Big sticker. So, big sticker question. I don't know if you can Google this, and I don't even know if this is this is the right answer, but we'll go for it. Again, don't, for, don't, remember, don't forget, we don't, we don't fact check these. We just assume it's correct. So, are we ready? <laughs> when was pineapple... First put on a pizza. Go. Oh. What year was pineapple first put on a pizza? And this is from George, who's just won himself a mug. So we'll just, just the a year we're after, is it? Yeah. So when you when you send the mug saying you want us the email saying you want a mug, George, put down you need a sticker as well, because we asked you a question. So you need yeah. a mug and a sticker. <laughs> was the question when or why? When? When was pineapple first put on a pizza? What year? Okay. Uh Lord Barkley says 42. Sergeant Bone says dad play. Uh, we've got lots of I don't know the answer, so I'll just let you read through and see when, uh, when the, the, we've actually had the right answer. The correct answer is uh given by Tim Roberts, who says 1962. Oh, nice. I don't know how you know it was the first time that Pete's was like nobody had ever done it before. I don't know, but 1962 apparently. So Tim Roberts, well done. You've won yourself a big sticker. Uh, ted at emodels.co.uk with your name and address. Yay. Um, put down big sticker so we know to send you this one and not one of these ones. Yeah. Jo Joanna says it's all to do with the electromagnetic fields due to atomic alignment. I don't ah. think you're talking about pineapple. Well, that's how they know when the pineapple went on the pizza. I don't get this why people yeah. don't like pineapple on pizza. It's nice. Because it's no. It's nice. <sighs> so, yes. Um, George, when you send that email for your mug, don't forget to say you want a, a sticker as well. Big sticker. Yes. Oh, no, a little sticker. A little sticker. That's a little sticker because you've got the question. Yeah. Do put right. that in there because the, the email that you sent in with the question, I'll, I'll get rid of that so we don't have the same thing twice. It's not twice so many stickers. So make sure you include that on that mail. Uh, right. So that gives us one last question, and this is for a regular sticker. Yay. Which is all overexposed and you can't see. The regular Emodels sticker. Uh, how many of these big ones have I got left? I've got a few. Uh, and this is the question from... No, that is my thumb. Recognise my thumb. Thank you. Uh, thumb, question from... No, not a question from my thumb. A question from uh, Earl D. Uh, who... And I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> I don't know at all. Or if this is even a real thing. Oh, this is for a little sticker. It is... What is Captain Underpants' cat's phrase? Go. What is the catchphrase of Captain Underpants? Okay. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It it was a film. Was it? What is Captain yeah. Underpants' catchphrase? I never watched the film, but I'm aware. We're of not going to worry about. Film. Yeah, we're not going to worry about the spelling on this, but I don't even know. I I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> what is Captain Underpants' catchphrase? Uh, Gladick says pineapple on pizza. No, I tend to agree. Yep. Are we going? Is this going to be another question that stumps the audience? But it's just the strangest question to stump people. I'm pretty sure that's Googleable, though, isn't it? I don't know because I can I can get like deep science questions going and answered. But what was Captain Underpants' catchphrase? Oh, uh, Michael Brown says tra la la. I don't know how it was pronounced. Okay. Tra la la is apparently the right answer. Rubbish catchphrase that. Tra la la. Uh, but yes, the catchphrase was tra la la, apparently. I okay. Don't know what, uh, I don't know what Captain yeah. Underpants is. I don't. 
I don't think he's a real captain. Was it maybe a Paul Hogan kind of thing or something? I don't know. Anyway, anyway it was an animated CG type. Oh, uh, was it CG? Can't be that old then. It's not an old film. I didn't say it was an old film. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, Michael Brown, well done. You've won yourself uh, the uh, regular sticker. So, send a mail to ted at emodels.co.uk with your name and address and just put down that you want the regular sticker. Uh, and we'll get them all whizzed out to everybody. Uh, oh, he's oh, complaining you're not singing it with enough passion. I've, I've got to think of the children. <laughs> I have to think of the children. Uh, it's not Ted on his boat, says Lord Barkley the third. Oh, Jeff Longman says, I asked my kids. <laughs> Apparently it was comic. a comic that was banned. Oh, there you go. We've just spread word about it now. <coughs> Excuse me. So well done to everyone that, to everyone that won. And remember, George, when you mail about your mug, mail and say you want a sticker as well. Yep. And make sure to put down all of you what you've won so we know what to send you. Uh, if you've mailed before or won before, make sure to include your name and address again because we don't keep, just so you know, when we send stuff to you, like stickers or mugs or whatever, we don't keep your records. We don't keep those emails. As soon as we send you a sticker or a mug or what have you, well, we just delete the email, so we don't keep that. So even if we've sent you stuff before, we'll still need your name and address. Right, that's that done. That's that. Uh, Michael Jackman says, I prefer my cheese, mushroom, pineapple, and onion pizza. Back to normal next week. Yeah, cheese, mushroom, pineapple, onion, but add some bacon and ground beef and and, pe and pineapple and anchovies. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Michael Jackman, the one that doesn't like tomato as well. I don't have tomato on his pizza, I think. I don't know. I don't know. But, but, um, I don't know what I was about to say. I was about to say something awesome and I've instantly forgotten what it was. Yay. You have no idea. Oh, yeah. I may I may like pineapple, but I can't stand pepperoni. Oh, no, no, pepperoni. I, yeah. I just don't like pepperoni, which is another staple part of pizzas. But yeah, Michael well, Jackman's allergic to tomato, so he doesn't have tomato on his pizza. Jamie Bone says, "What does everyone think about ham and jam sandwiches, or does that sound like a good mix?" I've tried Nutella and, and uh, um, Marmite before now, so I'm I'm quite happy with ham and jam. You, you said that was really nice, didn't you? It was very nice. <laughs> no, it wasn't very nice. I said it was very nice once, and uh, our friend Paul said, "Oh, go and try that." And then he came back and said, "I hate you." I said, "Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't nice, was it?" <laughs> uh, apparently, Joanna's got a spider crawling up her wall. Throw it out, catch it, and throw it out. Anyway, just just don't worry if it's walking. You're fine. It's if it's running, you have to worry. If it's going away from you, that's the best possible situation. Yeah, TK says huntsman spider. Uh, I, I recently discovered peanut butter and jam, or peanut butter and jelly, as our colonial cousins call it, and that is absolutely fantastic. I don't even like peanut butter. But I don't like peanut butter. butter so but jamming with it. No. <gasps> uh, okay. Um, we we've still got a thing to give away, haven't we? Yes, we need to do this week's giveaway. We can do this week. Yes. Hey. I shall lock it on you. Lock it on me, and I shall find it again. It is locked upon you now, my good friend. Um, as as ever, we try to keep things themes together so as as the uh, space Try. force was the theme from the uh what's in store this week uh, the giveaway is also themed to that sort of thing that sort of thing <laughs> well it's not exactly space force because it's not there aren't any space force kits yet uh but we have the uh a real rocket an actual rocket you can have your own real flying rocket what it does not contain warheads. It's the MPC USS Enterprise, NCC seventeen oh one, rocket set number four, apparently. Um I think they've done other other themed. This is the uh so the Enterprise themed one. Uh but it's an actual rocket. It uh it says for the first time since the nineteen sixties, MPC are making rocket kits ready to launch in about one hour. It doesn't sound very ready if it takes an hour, but you know. In an hour, it was ready to launch. Uh, they're pre-painted, pre-decorated in traditional Star Trek colours of Starfleet and the Klingon Empire. They even come with pre-printed parachute for safe return and reuse. Oh, cool. And so, uh, yeah, they fly to a height of 260 feet and float safely back to Earth, ready for more flights. Yeah, you can so, stick, a Go you stick a GoPro on that and actually film it going up as well. <gasps> it probably won't get to 260 feet if you've got a GoPro on it. Uh, Sergeant Bone says that's cool. Everyone else is. Uh, Jeff Longman says Space Force. <laughs> Everyone else is still talking about pizza. Yeah, well, pizza is <laughs> always a valid answer. But um, you can join your own Space Force if if space is two hundred and sixty feet up. 
Yeah. If you if you just got a marker pen and wrote Space Force down the side and spelt it wrong, you'd still be a million times better than the real Space Force idea. <laughs> uh, Mike Mountain says you can't use it indoors then. If your house is greater than 260 feet tall, it's perfectly safe for indoor use. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Jeff Longman does say rocket motor not included. I don't know how it's powered. It definitely looks like it's got flames coming out the bottom there. Flames, Cabron. Flames, Ben uh, Two-tier design with detailed graphics. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. So uh, if you win it, let us know how it launches. Yeah, yeah but anyway. no, it, it's, a, it's a freebie. It's a thing you can win. So <laughs> nothing to lose here. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm quite, that's quite cool. I, I'd, I'd want to stick a camera on that. And it's, then uh, what does it lands in the neighbor's garden next door, uh, the neighbor across the way that I don't like, and I would never see it again. Uh, what if I launch it from the roof? Says TK, then you get an extra 30 feet. Yeah. Or, or more if you're in a block of flats. Um, uh, 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 there's a question. Hang on. Mike Mountain says, who said, can I use it indoors? Dave at Butch, that model says, not yours, Dad. It's a bungalow. Ig models do accept no responsibility for any injuries or death resulting in the use of their rockets. Yes. <laughs> or disappointment if you don't actually go to space. You will not go to space today. No. Uh, so, yes, um, to win this, uh, as ever, uh, when the stream has actually finished and it's a video on the YouTube channel, uh, leave your comment on there. Should, should we have a space fact? Yeah, do a space fact. We, we like facts because we learn things. Hmm. Don't say we learn correct things, but we learn. No, no, things. we learn things. So uh, yes, um, put put a space fact on on the video once it's available as a viewable video instead of being a live stream. Don't put it in the comments now. Mm. Like it's actually a video, and then put it on there. And I expect hundreds of you will be wanting your own very own space force rocket. Space force. Have you still got it open, by the way? Have you still got it there on your screen? I haven't. Oh, okay. No. Somebody's asking if it takes the SD's motors, but I'm sure somebody mentioned. Hang about. I, ha I have, but it doesn't actually give any details like that. Okay. Uh, it just says, uh, it, hang about, it does say something. It says, compatible with uh, Estes and Quest motors. Oh, there you go. So if you've got a Quest motor or an Estes motor, then yes, you can use those. And that might make it go higher than 200, and I don't know. Yeah. So perhaps that means it doesn't come with those motors, but you can get those motors. Uh, so yes, it is. It says, will Norwich Airport complain that they're only half a mile away? I don't know. No, not a couple <laughs> hundred feet. Well, just try it. And if you get the black helicopters, then we never hear from you again. Then we yeah. know. At least we'll know. Um, TK says, space, the final. Oh. <laughs> space, the final. Oh. Oh, yeah. As a prize giveaway. Don't forget one week we gave away. Uh, what did we give away? A, 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 a heli Mario helicopter. Half a horse. Oh, sorry. Half a... <laughs> no, we never did do the half no, horse. We weren't allowed to give away half a horse because they sold out. <laughs> yeah. If if I don't know if we actually did we tell everybody that we did didn't we I think yeah we mentioned it yeah, yeah. we might one day they might get them back and we'll have to give half a horse away. Uh, Paul D, Paul M De Tomasio says pigs in space pigs in space butcher that model says question if space is expanding what is it expanding into nothing mm. it's it's expanding everything is expanding yeah Spruger addict says puffins can't fly in space and Phil East says unless they're duct taped to a rocket yeah. Space mess, says Sprueglue. Sprueglue never wins anything in space. I want to put a whistle on it and launch it, says George Flauter. Well, that's <clears throat> take the Stuka approach. That's why, you know, the fans on the front of Stuka dive bombers were purely there to make the screaming noise to terrify the people who were bombing. Stick a little screamy fan on the front of it and launch it. Rah! That'd be great. Yep. <sighs> so, so, yes. That's that, I think. Yeah, so just uh, just wait till this video, wait till this stream's finished, wait till it's a video, stick a comment on there and give us an interesting space fact. We don't expect it to be accurate or correct. It, as long as it's amusing or interesting, we don't mind. Yeah. The sillier, the better. <laughs> um, That's probably about it, really, isn't it? And there's any other last-minute questions from the from the uh, gallery? Uh, you could take one of Fox's Transformers to Transformers in Space, says Jamie Bow. I think if you tape anything to it, the height is going to be somewhat sacrificed. Yeah. Probably down to, you know, from 260 feet down to 2.6 feet. Yeah. Depending <laughs> on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you strap like a dog to it, or a table or a car or something, don't strap animals to it. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can win one, but you can also go back to e-models and buy several more. Yeah. And then you could take them all around a chair. Oh. <gasps> 
You could. You tell you what you could do. Why don't you? You could. It's a, oh, here's an idea. Get a load of them and get a big piece of PVC drain pipe and make a pointy bit at the top and then attach loads of them around the outside. You're getting a bit of Kerbal Space Program going on here, but you make your own multi, multi-thrust multi rocket, your own Ariane, and then it'd just go thousands of feet in the air <clears throat> and you'd have no lawn left. It'd be brilliant. But then you might have local airports being a bit cross. Yeah, they wouldn't know where it came from. Yeah, don't put, don't put your name and address on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah don't, don't, don't put anything on it that can identify you. Make sure you don't put an email sticker on the side of it. Either. Yeah. Uh, whoever wins won't be here in two weeks' time. They'll get done for terrorism, says Lord Barkley the Third. Tape 600 together, says TK. That's Russian. It's Russian, that is. Uh, uh, like James says, Major. In the future, do you think Puffins and Gumbler will morph into the master race? Puffpla. Gun, gun, gun flings. Puff pla or gun puff. Gun puff? That doesn't gun, work. Gunlings. Puff guns. Puff, puff guns. guns. Gun, puff pla. Yeah. I don't know. The puffins are a bit too cute to be. The thing is, if you can get bear guys, I think you can get puff guys. Puffin guys. They can pro- yeah, we can, it can be done. You just need to make the Japanese instantly like puffins. If you get the Japanese crazed about puffins, you'll suddenly see puffin gumplers. I'm pretty sure that would happen, yeah. Yeah. Trigger puff, says Lord Barkley the third. Michael Jackman says, that's all, folks. Time to put the budgie away so the cats can't have an early breakfast. Sounds Are there right. any 172nd se- well, again. Are there any 172nd scale Zaku, says Sergeant Bones. They don't, Bandai don't use traditional scales apart from their hard graph line. They're at 1 100th or 1 144th, 160 or 148th scale. Well, they're all traditional, but never mind. Um, master grade is one one hundredth. High grade is one one forty fourth. Real grade is one one forty fourth. Uh, mega size is one forty eighth scale. And perfect grade is one sixtieth. The only exceptions to all those are there are some kits called UCS hard graph kits which are one thirty fifth scale, more traditional scale, but they're typically small vehicles and figures. They're not they're like tanks or um, groups of figures. They're not mobile suits. Uh, George says the PG Zaku is one uh, sixtieth. Yep, all the perfect grade kits are close. Six. Yeah, all the perfect grades. Basically, every every grade is a set scale, so perfect grade is always one sixtieth. Master grade is always one one hundredth. Um, yeah, but one one forty eight scale is the mega size. Any about four or five kits in that scale. Uh, e models do have the mega size Zaku two in stock. It's one forty eight scale. It's about that tall. I was going to get one to do as a video bill, but then Chris got his little. One, his little uh, real grade one. I'm like, oh, well, you could do it. It's, I, I can't it, you just put them in the shelf next to each other. You, you wouldn't get that one in a shelf. Yeah, you? I don't think we could get you doing a build of a of a Zaku, and then I do a build of an even bigger Zaku. I don't think it'd work. Well, people, people expect yours to be bigger and better than mine anyway, so it's fair. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd like to see you try and put that in their shelf next to your eagle, though. I'd like to see him put it in any of the shelves. The shelves are that tall. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> One of the reasons I can't really I can't really do anything any kind of big gumpler for them because there's nowhere to put them when they go back. I want that mega size maybe Christmas this year says Phil East. I did the mega size RX seventy eight two and it was about that tall. It was brilliant. It was dead simple, dead simple build. Is that as big as they get? Hmm? Is that as big as they get? I've seen bigger ones, but they might be custom. Um, mega size. There are there are one thirty. There is a very very small number of one thirty fifth scale full gumpler, but they're not made by Bandai. They're usually in resin. They're made by a different cut, like the um, I can't remember what it's called. There's 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 one, but they're they're like in resin, and they're many many hundreds of pounds. Uh, G, oh, what are they called now? G Gundam something. It's the they're sort of not licensed, and they cost a fortune, but they're all resin. Uh, they're not they're not official from Bandai anyway. No, no. but they're like you know many 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 hundreds of pounds, over a thousand pounds because they're all resin parts. They did the. Uh, uh, there's a life size one in Japan somewhere, isn't there? Uh, yes, they have a life size, life size unicorn, life size RX MT82, which is away in storage, and a life size Zaku somewhere. There is a one twelfth scale RX MT82 in Zaku. If you have five grand and you know where to find it, you can actually get a one twelfth scale. It's about five foot tall. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, the mega size ones are great fun. They're dead simple. They're designed for little kids, so they're dead simple builds. But there's tons of potential for weathering and painting. I will at some point do a mega size Zaku. Uh, Paul Di Tomaso says G system. Yes, they're the ones that do the big 135th scale gunplay. They're massive. 
Uh, making models is not late, am I? A uh, little bit, yeah. Yeah, you just covered it right at the end, Carl. Sorry about that. Sergeant Bones says, whoa, 112 scale. Yeah, there are some 112 scale Gumpla. They're designed for shops as display things. You can buy them. They're like five or six grand. You have to build it. It's still assemble it. Have sounds and everything. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, right, well, that's it then, I think, for tonight. Right, we, we do. We're actually hanging on 11 o'clock, so two hours spot on. Yes, Brugloo says, good night all. Big shout out to Mama Fox and Skipper Ted. Get well soon. Thank Indeed. You. And thank Thoughts you all with well. both of them. Mm. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching and joining in. And uh, I think that's probably it, really, isn't it? I'll see yeah, you next week. Yeah, remember, if you won anything tonight, drop an email, ted at emodels.co.uk with your name, address, and what you won. Yep. Uh, throughout the week as well, you can keep the emails coming in with questions and shout outs and things like that. And don't you don't have to wait until we remind you next week. Yep. Yeah, please, 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 the love of dog do. So we've got questions to ask. <laughs> and maybe maybe not too in depth science. This next yeah, week. make make them slightly easier questions. Yeah, science is good, but like advanced. Yeah. Uh, and stick with us next week for Fox's uh, what's in store. Or maybe Ted's, depending on how we go. Mm, we'll um, see how it goes. And there'll, there'll be a, a theme that might not be quite so challenging as this one. Just... Yeah, it might be like next week's theme might be like algae or something. <laughs> you can't do that now. You've given it single celled organisms. <laughs> oh, give it away. Oh. oh dear. Right. Uh yes, yeah, so thanks thanks for watching. Um good night from me and him and anybody oh, thanks for the mods for helping out tonight. Yep. Yeah, thank uh, you to thank you to Mike and TK who've been in. Uh, Colin wasn't with us tonight, Festa 67, but he'll be your mod going forward as well. Another one of our mods. Yep. Uh, everybody did very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Fox has got the button, so I can do it with no hands. So <laughs> just, just hand. <laughs> just hand. Right. Good thanks. Night, thanks for watching. Adios, bye -bye.